Joel Lamosa with a wonderful rendition of the Australian National Anthem and the New Zealand National Anthem. Good afternoon from North Harbour Stadium, a very hot day here. It is game four of what have been an intriguing series. The home team, the Auckland Tuatara taking on the four-time champions, the Brisbane Bandits. Last night, well, there was theatre, there was drama. The Tuatara won, one run to nothing to secure a playoff berth. But it can only get better for this Tuatara team. A win today, and they will secure the division championship and go into a straight semi-final rather than the wild card. We look forward to having your company throughout the afternoon and what we hope will be another memorable day. Let's now go pitch side, catch up with Dale Budge, who's alongside of one of New Zealand's leading coaches in Gus Ledger. Well, Gus Ledger, let's uh, bring in assistant coach Gus Ledger. Um, mate, you've been part of baseball in New Zealand for a very long time. You're the first New Zealander signed to a professional contract. What do you think last night means for the sport in this part? Oh, I think it uh, showed a, a, a coming of age for the program. Uh, I have been away for a little bit, but coaching sort of part of my DNA. So just trying to help and provide where I can. Uh, those little bits of inspiration and maybe just making those that are from overseas, making them feel nice and comfortable in this place in New Zealand. What about some of the young New Zealanders that have contributed on the roster this year? What will this do for, for their careers and, and uh, what lies here with them? Yeah, a lot of kids have taken the opportunity. It is a bit of a pressure cooker, but I think the best way to test where you're at is to be put under this sort of pressure and we're pretty blessed uh, guys like Ryan Flynn and put this together and now we're getting the fruits of our labour. Well mate, congratulations on that performance. Good luck today and uh, all the best. Thanks buddy. Cheers. And so we are all set to go. Now joining me in commentary, we will have Dale Budge alongside of me but also the voice of the Brisbane Bandits. He's been magnificent throughout the four days here is Eric Bremer. Eric, good afternoon, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'd like to wish a happy Australia Day to the folks watching back in Brisbane. And though this is the final game of the season for the Brisbane Bandits, they can still play the role of spoiler as we see the Bandits starting lineup. A win today for the Bandits would force the Tuatara to take a look at the scoreboard after the game. Colwell, Wade, and Martinez, the top third. Darville, Dutton, and Nielsen. Then Kay, Lutz, and Sutherland. Very familiar starting nine for the Bandits. Travis Blackley, the former Major League veteran on the mound. Well, the big surprise today is who is starting on the mound today for the Tuatara. Ryota Okamoto, the unorthodox left-hander who lives on Auckland's North Shore but hails originally out of Japan. He is very unorthodox. He was very effective a couple of nights ago through an inning. Eric, what do you make of this decision from Coach Steve Mintz? I get the sense that this is going to be a bullpen game by design. Get Okamoto to throw a couple innings and then Empty out the bullpen. And strike immediately from Okamoto. And of course the Tuatara hope to win this game, but if they don't, and the Sydney Blue Sox cannot defeat the Canberra Cavalry later this afternoon, the Tuatara will be playing already on Tuesday in the one game wildcard playoff. That will be here against the Perth Heat. A win for the Tuatara or a Canberra Cavalry loss, any combination thereof, would put the Tuatara straight into the semifinal round, which is a best of three. They would have home field advantage as well as the division champions. And that will be against Melbourne. Uh, Dale Budge, good afternoon. Welcome. G'day, guys. Yep. Stoked to be here. G'day, guys. A little bit dusty, their voice. You'll have to excuse that today. A little bit hoarse. A lot of yelling and screaming last night. Yeah, convinced. That was a big moment. And a comfortable catch taken by Yoni Hernandez at shortstop. So one up, one down. Okay, we talk about economy for our pitchers. They want to try and throw as the fewest number of pitches as they possibly can. A lot of effort, a lot of energy goes through the hip and the shoulder rotation. They want to look after the arm. Uh, Dale, an uh, interesting decision here uh, with Okamoto, the starting pitcher today for the Tuatara. Yeah, sort of spot start, isn't it? And I think this is a, a little bit to do with the Brisbane Bandits struggling a wee bit in the last couple of years with, with Okamoto. Just, he, he throws a lot of off-speed stuff. I mean, he basically lives in off-speed stuff and uh, the Bandits had some trouble with him in Auckland last year and uh, he was pretty effective a couple of nights ago. So an opportunity maybe to try and get a bit of a spot start. I think uh, Eric's right, they'll probably try and get maybe two, three innings out of him and look to uh, to use some of the, the bullpen arms. I think they'll probably want to keep one or two maybe fresh for potentially yeah. Tuesday night. I'm possibly hearing that Jian Ho Sheng might come back in. He worked better. He wasn't successful as a starter, I think, on game two. But he performed very well when he first arrived with the team while the team was away against the Sydney Blue Sox. 
And so I guess it's a little bit of trial and error too, heading into the playoffs for the Tuatara. Interested, Eric, and, and what the Bandits' mindset will be like today, given that you know they were obviously coming here looking for a sweep, and, and we know what they've been able to do the back end of seasons uh, in the last few years. How do you think they'll approach today's game, given that the situation now obviously changed? Well, they'll play hard. They respect the game, and they respect that the two Atara are trying to win this game. They'll play clean, but they will give it their all, and you always want to head into the off season on a high note. So inside, so. For the last four years, it's been the ultimate high note, winning the ABL championship. That won't happen this year, but on an individual level, everyone wants to have a couple hits on their final day, and everyone wants to pitch well as well. So the count is two balls, two strikes. Top of the first. Logan Wade, their shortstop, is the second to bat for them. And this time it will find Blackstone, a comfortable ground out at second base. Was there much said last night after the game about what the Bandits have been able to achieve these last few years? Because to, to win four of these, I mean, it's a massive deal for the Tuatara just to make the playoffs. And I think we appreciate the amount of work that goes into to achieving something like that. To win four successive titles the way they have, much said about it in the... Yeah, the it, it was an emotional post game for many of the players and the, the support staff. I don't think anyone within the Bandits organization feels that this is the end of a dynasty, however, even though they missed out on the playoffs this year, they expect to be back in the thick of things next year. So Jeremy Martinez, their catcher, who was a notable admission from the starting lineup yesterday. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, but were you somewhat surprised that this quality player wasn't in the lineup? Well, the reason that he wasn't in the starting lineup is because Tim Atherton, who started the game last night, has a personal relationship with Ryan Battaglia. They're both on the Australian national team. And that is a foul ball down the left field line, but coming around to take a comfortable catch. And the catch is taken. So outstanding from Ryota Okamoto. Chris Richards with the comfortable catch. And three up, three down. So good economy to start things. Exactly the start Steve Mintz would be hoping for. What about when you cast your eye to the, the postseason, Eric, and you look at the, the teams that are in contention now? I imagine there'll be a lot of teams over the other side of the Tasman that were quietly pleased to see Brisbane ousted, given how well they've hit their straps in the last couple of weeks. Oh, sure. Uh, the last couple of weeks, I've talked as we played in division, playing the Sydney Blue Sox and the Canberra Cavalry. When you win a championship, much less four in a row, you always have a target on your back. So whenever the Bandits went on the road to play someone or welcomed in, uh, a visiting club to One Hub Stadium, they knew that they were going to get that other team's best. Everyone wants to play well against the champs. The two Atara were able to do that last night, and so, uh, you know, it's been a, a challenge for the Bandits this season. And just running through that starting lineup, a familiar look too. Plenty of power there in the middle with Walker, Kim Won Sook, Andrew Mark. What a career season he has had too. So, very familiar lineup. The big notable admission for this series, of course, Josh Morgan back in the United States, that 3-4 punch in the middle. But you get certainly, as we saw last night, getting plenty from Kent Blackstone and Johnny Homza batting two and three hole for the Tuatara. Let's talk about the starting pitcher today for the Brisbane Bandits. What can you tell us about Travis Blackley? I see he started in just the five games so far this season. Yeah, Travis Blackley began the year... Uh, injured and then these past couple weeks he's unfortunately fallen victim to some poor weather. Blackley had a solid major league career in America. He came up in 2004 with the Seattle Mariners, also played for the Oakland Athletics, San Francisco Giants, Texas Rangers and Houston Astros in his career. He is on the Australian national team and these last two weeks playing home games in Brisbane. Weather got in the way two weeks ago. He pitched into the fourth inning, but the game was prematurely ended. None of those stats counted, even though he was on the field. And then last week, they were unable to play, period, is the final game of round nine. If he finds him in a south in a hole, what's his default setting? What's the pitch that he tends to go to? Well, Blackley's best move is actually his pickoff move. He's great at holding runners as a left-handed pitcher, but his pitch mix is a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, and a cutter. And the difference between the two-seamer, which tails away from the action, and the cutter, which cuts in to a right-handed batter like Hernandez, is the difference between a ball on the barrel of the bat and one that might break your bat. His pickoff move is legendary stuff. I mean, the players talk about it. I think he had a, an inning 
last season in one of the games against the Tuatara where he picked off three players to success so in, in the inning. So what's the story here then, Dale, for the Tuatara? You just simply don't try and steal? Well, perhaps you, just, you, you shorten up the lead that you take. You, you're not too aggressive with the lead because, yeah, his pick-off move is, is exceptional. So Yoni Hernandez, what a revelation he has been for this club. Just so patient at the top, looking to set the table, looking to try and get himself on base. Oh, good straight fastball there from Blackley. This year, Blackley is 2-2 two and two with an ERA of just 2.03, but one of those losses came against the Tuatara back on the 14th of December. He allowed six runs, only one of them earned over five innings. Josh Morgan took him deep for a three-run homer, but as you said, Morgan's no longer in this lineup. So, good start here from Blackley. Two and I am looking forward to seeing Jared Walker's first at bat here. If we cast our mind back to that, that fixture we were just talking about in Brisbane, uh, Blackley hit Walker there was some words exchanged. The, the two teams, the, and there is good mutual respect between these two teams. The two teams came out. There was a bit of discussion, no punches well, or anything, but yeah, a little bit of emotion around it. You never genuinely believe there's any genuine intent when off those wayward pitches. But then when you get a guy like a Travis Blackley, who has the experience that Eric has just um, described in terms of the times he's had in the major leagues, when it's a guy of such an experienced head hitting a player, then maybe you do start to think that perhaps it was just a little bit deliberate. It was a little bit of an intimidating factor. You can see there the cold strike three. That was the tailing two-seam fastball from Blackley. From that angle, you can really see the lateral motion going away from the right-handed batter. Kent Blackstone. Batting two today. Home run yesterday. Well, I've got to say, Blackley looks impressive, doesn't he? 37 years old. He's been able to keep his body in good shape. He has dealt with some lower body injuries over the past few months, but... The hope is that he is fully healthy and in good shape to go for the Olympic bid. And that will not be an easy path for Australia and the New Zealand baseball team. I've said to the Australians, we won't contest any sort of playoff against you. We don't have the depth really, sort of our mid-20s through to mid-30s. We've got depth at under-23 level. We'll take the under-23 world championship spot. And I think that is just really good management. I think it's, it's smart. It's about not missing those middle stages of development for a lot of our young players. Blackley was unhappy with the ball call there. He thought that was a strike and then gestured with his pointer finger down, asking home plate umpire uh, Travis Watson where that pitch missed. So two balls, one strike. Kent Blackstone. This time Blackstone will be a ground out. And nice little play there, nice 3-1 play. And so two up, two down for the Tuatara. What, what can uh, Bandits fans expect to see from, from this roster going into next season? I mean, you talked about you know, the feeling that the, the dynasty is, is not over and the way that they've played down the stretch. You know, with those weather games may have just caught them out you know, from potentially being cracking at, at a fifth championship. What, what, is there likely to be much movement in the roster? I'm not quite sure. There are a couple guys on this roster, Blackley included, who has said outright that uh, their careers may end with the uh, hoped for Olympic bid this upcoming year. I had a chance to talk with Travis uh, for an interview series that we're doing driving around in a car, and Travis told me pretty much that he's sticking around and trying to stay in baseball shape to hopefully perform and represent his native country in the Olympics. Mm. I think he loves Browns Bay so much he wants to play for the Tuatara next season as well. Well, fingers crossed anyway. So Johnny Homza, the caribou crusher, the man out of Anchorage in Alaska. He's just really come into his own. He's been Mr. Consistent all season. He's pretty much started every one of the Tuatara games. And he's, he hasn't been playing catcher. He's been playing at third base. We've seen him play at second base as well. But he'll be looking to try and go long. Big swing, though. Great comeback again from Travis Blackley. The greatest success for the Australian baseball scene uh, at a team level was the 2004 silver medal that they Against won Japan. Yeah. at the Athens Olympics. Travis Blackley was originally on that team, but was called up to make his major league debut for the Seattle Mariners just before the Olympics. So even though he was supposed to be on that team, he did not get a silver medal. Well, I'd argue, though, that in the sport of baseball, getting your major league debut probably bigger than the Olympics. Absolutely. I mean, there's very few sports where you can say that the Olympic gold medal or Olympic medal is not the premier, the premier prize. But like tennis, let's be honest, tennis, Olympic Games gold, gold or winning Wimbledon? Maybe? No, you'd take Wimbledon. Golf, 
the green jacket or a gold medal, you're going to take the green jacket, aren't you? So there are some sports, and I'd imagine ba Major League Baseball being one of them as well. Yeah, very controversial too, that 2004 final against Japan. I think Australia felt they deserved to win the gold medal. Definitely a sense of unfinished business for Travis at this point in his career and his life. Plenty of guys in the Bandits organization, including their manager, David Nielsen, have donned the green and gold. This time, Homza, very good eye at the moment, Johnny Homza. We saw him in game two. He must have had about 17, 18, possibly even 20 pitches thrown to him. Just foul after foul after foul. And while we might, Travis Blackley might be winning the battle at the moment, this is going to cut into the fatigue levels. And so the damage that we're seeing from Homza in terms of the foul balls this time. Nice pitch on the inside too, just clipping the inside corner of the plate. Again, that two-seamer. And that is three up, three down. So another very good pitching duel beginning to develop here in game one. And as we head to the top of the second, it's the two Atara none. It is the Brisbane Bandits, four-time defending champions, Zilch. It's always a good day when you're eating pizza, um, especially for breakfast. As you can see, I'm enjoying a nice garlic knot right now, so it could be worse. The dough, flipping it up, trying to catch it, that would sure be the hardest part. I tried to make a, a peace sign, um, didn't quite work out. Uh, Emerson here made a nice uh, smiley face. Turn it to a map for I went with the Bronx. I mean, that just stuck out to me. Yankees, the Bronx. I mean, you can never go wrong with Italian sausage and capsicum, or peppers, however you want to say it. It's just, it's simple, but yet delicious. Probably like a Brooklyn city, maybe, with sausages and pepperonis. Let's see what happens in a little. Oh yeah, you could definitely chuck these around. I mean, you could chuck them out to the fans. It'd be a great little promotion there. So, Regan, hint, hint. Game four of an intriguing series between the four-time defending champions, the Brisbane Bandits, and the home team, the Auckland Tuatara, live from North Harbour Stadium. Plenty at stake today for the Tuatara. Last night, they clinched a playoff berth. Today, they look to try and win the division championship on the mound. A somewhat unorthodox decision for an unorthodox pitcher who was very effective in Ryota Okamoto. In the top of the first, three up, three down. And it will be... Wes Darfel, the third baseman for the Brisbane Bandits, who has been wonderful since coming into this team. And just his, I think, 17th game this time. Just that very, very slow curveball from Ryota. He just takes the speed off that. Garville's batting 321. This will be, as you said, his 18th game with the club arrived halfway through. I don't know if he was originally in the Bandits' plans. They'd hoped to have Mike Marjuma playing third base, but he's filled in quite admirably. That's what we talk about, that inability to be able to get Okamoto away, and that should be a very comfortable catch taken, and it is from Max Brown, downtown Max Brown. So again, great economy. Uh, Dale, I want to talk about Okamoto because he is of Japanese origin, but he lives on the North Shore. He plays his local baseball here. Uh, what do you know about him through his young days back in Japan? Was he always, uh, did he have an X Factor? Was, was he on the cusp in Japan? Or did no, he think, sort of discover the talent over here? I, I think what you see is is what you get with, with Okamoto. I don't think there was, um, 
yeah, didn't come through a, a program in Japan where he was, uh, you know, a, a lights out youngster like some of the other players on, on the Tuatara roster. He's, uh, you know, works hard. He's a very popular member of the, the baseball community here in New Zealand, particularly on the North Shore, and an inspiration to a, a whole generation of young Asian players on uh, on the North Shore. And um, you know, him along with Andrew Mark have been two real pin-up guys for for the local game here. And well, just a couple of pitches there, just getting away from Okamoto. Might just want to settle him down a bit, Johnny Homs, at some point. And that is always the challenge, isn't it, though? Because Okamoto, he hasn't had a lot of game time. And this is his first start. We've got three catchers in this Tuatara team. We've had Sebastian Noye, uh, Tawera Bishop, Bo Bishop, who's played the last few nights. And, of course, Johnny Homza. Must be difficult, too, for a pitcher like this to have that communication, which is so important. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, we just talked about it a moment ago with um, Atherton and Bataglia having that relationship and you do see that when you have guys playing together uh, more often they get familiar with one catcher or haven't really seen that develop this season just because of the number of catches they've had and the number of the amount of movement on the uh, Tuatara roster players coming on and off. So Okamoto now finds himself in a bit of a hole well and truly behind the count and the first walk of the day and it will be Wade Dutton and that may not be a bad thing, Dutton. He's had a very good season coming into the series. He had 23 RBIs, 30 hits. Always seems to play well against the Tuatara too, Wade Dutton. Josh Colmenter thought the same thing. He issued only two walks last night, and both were to Dutton, including one that was in the seventh and final frame, a leadoff walk. It was the potential tying run, but he was left at second base. Now designated hit it, Jacob Nilsson. Mitch Nelson, my apologies. I've done that a couple of times this series. Lots of Nielsons on this Bandits roster. I don't think I'll be getting a Christmas card from him. I don't think Jacob minds. He's back home <laughs> watching, and he got a couple hits the other night. <laughs> it would be nice, wouldn't it, if uh, the walk-off home run, you get the name wrong, and one team gets the moment, and the guy that deserves it gets ignored. Yeah, manager Dave was extremely gracious last night for a team that frankly thumped the Tuatara in games one and two in the series then to, to, to lose last night and have their playoff dreams sort of eliminated. Could forgive him for not being in a mood to want to greet the opposition or he was standing in the uh, entrance to the, the players tunnel there congratulating Tuatara players as they went up. I think there is some genuine respect between these two teams. And Certainly between the two managers, Steve Smith yeah. and David Nielsen go back couple years. Yeah, it was very classy from the Bandits last night, that's for sure. Just outside, so Okamoto just struggling a little bit with the radar at the moment. I'd imagine Steve Mintz will just wanting to be throwing strikes because as the ball doesn't come on, and we've seen it already, a number of the outs have just come from, have come from almost just little pop-ups. Bat has just not been able to get the timing. And we talk about it this time, though. It will be a single, a hit to left field, and the runners will advance from first to second, so runners now suddenly in scoring position. Had a chance to personally congratulate Steve, myself, before today's game as we take another look at pitch left up, and Nielsen deposits it into left field. Steve and I have gotten to know each other a little bit back in American baseball. I cover the same league that he manages in, and uh, he's a pitching coach for the Down East Wood Ducks, a Texas Rangers affiliate in North Carolina and uh, Steve and I talked when they arrived in Brisbane a few weeks ago talking about everything that this Tuatara club has gone through on and off the field it really is a testament to their resilience and his managing ability. Now Grant Kay looking for the RBI single they'll hold runners on third though so runners on the corner runners on second bases are loaded yeah it's been a it's been a season of hurdle after hurdle after hurdle and um, it's a small, hard-working group that have uh, put this whole franchise together. Regan Wood, the CEO, Debbie Howard, Pandy Frew and Hannah Lyle. Five of us sort of worked all through the year, piecing everything together with a very small budget, ably supported by the, the ownership group and the, the board, Noel Davies and the rest of the board, the Baseball New Zealand board, that have invested so heavily in this and put so much faith in this program and to see it those scenes last night of the fans and the crowd and the champagne being sprayed, and, you know, that's absolutely priceless. I'm sure 
there will be a natural flow on effect as, as people get excited with all of this. We'll see more people playing the game next well, year. Top of the second, to a tar in a hole here. Let's just see what we big can get power from threat here in Lutz too. Rio to Okamoto. The big power threat. Thinking though with Okamoto, he just has that ability just to take the speed off. Very, very hard picture when it comes to timing in terms of going long. We've seen a number of hits. This time gets him swinging. That is better from Okamoto. Gail, you asked me a few moments ago about how this Bandits roster might look different next year. Here's a guy where we just don't know. Donald Lutz has already moved on to a coaching career in the Cincinnati Reds organization back in the United States. He's still playing in the Australian Baseball League because he loves this league and this team so much. Not sure if this is the end of the road for him, but if it is, what a career. Oh, yeah. Parts of two seasons in Major League Baseball with the Reds. Big part of some Bandits championships in recent seasons. So Lutz, like an Okamoto foul ball away, 0-2 the count. So good to see Okamoto now ahead on the count. It's just me, or is it more of a changing of the guard this year when you look at some of the other franchises, some you know, long-time star players that are calling it quits at the end of the season, a couple of Melbourne Aces players or whatnot? Yeah, Melbourne Aces will be losing Luke Hughes, the all-time home run leader in modern ABL history. He is retiring after a career that saw him make it to the major leagues with the Twins and the Athletics. I think now you're seeing with this league beginning its second decade, that first generation of players now just aging out of their careers. That's a natural progression. Oh, got him swinging, strikes him out. Brilliant, brilliant from Okamoto. One out away. And I'd imagine the message here is, let's get some bat on ball if we need to. Let's rely on the field. In the 10-year history of this league, there have been two teams that might be considered dynasties. It was the Perth Heat that were the first to really take charge and win a couple of Claxton Shields, now most recently the Bandits. The Perth Heat are once again at the top of this league contending for a Claxton Shield title, but the Bandits might have learned some lessons from the Heat in terms of how to go through a rebuilding effort. David Sutherland, what a revelation he's been this series. A home run on Thursday night to take the Bandits out to a two-run-to-nothing lead at the top of the second, and then last night, how close did he come to tying things up? It was just an absolutely wonderful catch from Chris Richards. It was a game-changing catch, arguably a season-changing catch. And... Kent Blackstone hit a home run, almost identical. The difference was it carried by about two more inches, and it was a home run in Sutherland. Well, it was simply fish and chip paper today as an out. So I'm getting a few reviews that uh, <laughs> that video clip though on the ABL social media accounts. Chris oh, Richards oh, will live off that for a while. I'm oh, sure. I checked it this morning. I think it was up to about seven thousand. Views and just what space we of 12 hours. Chris Richards with another story to tell. Is he a bit of a talker, Chris? Is he? Oh, is he what? Brilliant. Gives himself a nickname, White Lightning. <laughs> oh, this is long, but this should be taken comfortably by the man we've just been talking about. In fact, it's downtown Max Brown and right field. Chris Richards played right last night. He is playing third base today. So great getting out of a hole there for Okamoto. That is impressive. We we're just talking about all the people that have contributed to this franchise. There's one name that we, we haven't mentioned, and I think it's important to note the work that Ryan Flynn did Absolutely. to get this up and running. You know, without him, there well, would be no Tuatara. But was, Ryan Flynn, just in terms of, just Ryan Flynn, just in terms of baseball in this country. Yeah. I mean, you know, my days as a talkback radio host, never had a problem getting Ryan on because he was just so engaging, and he would just sell his sport every opportunity he got. I mean, we. We had some wonderful players. Suddenly there was a connection with Major League Baseball. Um, I remember Curtis Granderson coming down here yep. from the Yankees, then went on to the Mets, and that wouldn't have happened without Ryan Flynn. Oh, he just, you know, you'd get emails from him at 2, 3 in the morning every other day. He'd be up just working you know, and non-stop, just absolute passion and, uh, yeah, a, a massive credit. Ian enjoying himself on Palau at the moment. Looks like a lovely part of the world, just following Super Ryan nice. on Facebook, social media. So here we go, the bat we've been waiting for. Walker to lead things off here. Yeah, and wonderful story on, on Jared Walker. If you haven't read it, pick up a copy of the Sunday Star Times. 
because there was a full page article on this man and the struggles he's had in life and how he's come through it all just to be an absolute gentleman in life but a gentleman of the game too and I describe him as box office because he's worth every cent of admission walk up and let's just hope that he can make the majors lost a father at a young age a brother through a drug overdose then his mother passed away a coach who was a big mentor to him passed away he was impacted heavily by the death of fellow Tuatara teammate Ryan Costello and through all of that he holds his head high he doesn't feel like he's owed anything he understands that everybody has struggles in life and that you can't try and draw comparisons For some prior context Walker was hit by a Blackley pitch back in round four that was the last batter that Blackley faced as benches cleared no punches were thrown but some harsh words were exchanged it's an, and I look to it was really only by these two as well. You know, like the bench is cleared, but it was really just these two players, two you know, fierce competitors. You, you love it. You love the emotion of sport and the, you know, the desire to win. Both well, of them possess. Well, I mean, the stuff about, oh, it's a family game and you've got to tone it all down, I sort of, to a point, but sport is emotional. It, rational people become irrational in the moment. That's what it's all about. That's why people turn up. Walker does crowd the plate, not at an unreasonable level, but... If you're a 37-year-old pitcher like Travis Blackley and you see some young guy crowding the plate on you, sometimes you're going to want to brush him back. Absolutely. I thought it was fantastic sporting theatre. It's time. Foul ball away. And that guy, oh, Martinez. Go Ouch. Two balls and one strike. Travis Watson comes out. This gives Martinez a moment. Let's just have a look at... Tough job being a catcher, See if isn't we can it? just get a replay of that. No, we can't, unfortunately. Oh. I don't know if anyone wants to see it again. <laughs> we'll call it I just one strike and two balls. But I just wanted everybody <laughs> to go, oh. I sense you've used that before. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, that happens a couple times a year. So a good crowd in the game. Great crowd in last night. Record crowd here for a, what was a wonderful moment. The crowd didn't leave either. It was a one run to nothing win for the Tuatara, but... It was as gripping as watching arguably the most exciting game of T20 cricket. It was dominated by the ball, but it just made it compelling. And now Walker. Two and two the count. That that was once again operating that shift. Second baseman playing in really shallow right field. Moved everyone around a spot too. So plenty of room if Walker can get one off the end of the bat and Almost in cricket terms, a square cut straight down the left field line, but clearly physics work against him. So, ooh, and we talk about cramping him on the inside. That was a great example of it there too. I think Blackley's asking why wasn't that called a strike? He felt that it might have just... It's more than just making a statement. In order to get Walker out, you have to pitch him inside because he crowds the plate so much he has good coverage of the entire outer half of the plate. But we've seen teams come here and throw pitches like that. And Walker's still found a way to get himself on base. He clearly, it's almost like he wants to, he almost wants to lure the pitcher into throwing and cramping him. This time, foul ball away. So still a full count, three and two. He's pretty effective when he's... You know, he got a couple of strikes against him when he seems to choke up, still be able to... He yeah, possesses, obviously, some natural raw power, but I think he becomes a better hitter when he's not swinging for the fences. I haven't got the stats in front of me, but I'm sure as you know, with two strikes against him, his batting average is still going to be significantly higher than what most players would be. So, good battle here between Blackley and Walker and strikes him out this time Blackley wins that little battle and so one up one down top of the bottom of the second just a little look too from Blackley all in good cap. fun absolutely great contest Blackley gets a bit of him on that occasion now Kim Wonsuk coming out to Dale Budge's favourite song 
Yeah, I could uh, probably go the rest of my life without hearing this one again. <laughs> now he's done That's that. What happens when you have a five-year-old? He's, he's chosen this song because he he just has been so good with the young fans and the kids and makes his way and understands the importance of growing the sport. And there you go, you get the most serious, growing people becoming three-year-olds for a moment with that song. How good has he been for the league and for this team? Come one sock. Got Dan Richardson next mm -hmm. to us. Uh, head of the production team here and he's even doing the shark move <laughs> a very late addition to the roster Kim Won Sok has been everything they'd hoped all good inside pitch but doesn't get given the strike so interesting to just sort of see Travis Watson in terms of what, what have you made of his strike zone Eric in terms of how does he see the strike zone, Travis Watson? Well, Travis Blackley and Travis Watson, I don't think we'll ever agree on the strike zone <laughs> because Blackley will always want those pitches. But as long as it's consistent on both sides, that's all you can ask for. And got him swinging this time, so two and one the count. Did have a chance to talk with James Shields, who had the plate last night. He was very at, good, Shields. At, Brilliant. At third base this afternoon, and he said, you know, umpiring is so much easier when you have two veteran pitchers like Atherton and Colmenter who are able to place the pitch where they want it. It makes it so much easier as an umpire because you see where the catcher's target is set up and usually the pitch hits it. Oh, they're there to hit two. Great pitch. So two and two. There Great battle. There's been some discussion about the standard of umpiring and I say this a, a, without uh, trying to create any drama but you know, everyone in this league is trying to grow. The, the, the players are trying to get better. The, you know, the fans are trying to get more educated. The umpires need to, to, to do that as well. Is there some merit in looking at bringing some umpires, one or two umpires down from the United States to help try and grow the, the talent that's already down here? There may be a future in that. But everybody needs a coach, don't they? The players need a coach. Broadcasters need a coach. Yeah, there's no point being and frustrated at umpires. You, umpires, you, you know, whether they're, the um, whether they're the umpires or actually umpiring themselves, it's more about just that analysis afterwards. Let's sit down. Let's talk about the good things you did. Let's talk about maybe some of the things that weren't so good. And let's just try and continue to build. Last thing you want, though, is coaching by committee. Too many people having a say on it. So Kim now. And gets a foul ball away. So full count. I've got to say... Blackley, he's looked very controlled. There's been nothing really loose from him so far. And, and he's been throwing a lot of those two-seamers that it, from the center field camera angle, you can see dart away to the arm side of the pitcher and away from a right-handed hitter like Kim. We'll see if he goes with another two-seamer here on 3-2. And this time, another foul ball. And that is a very good catch up there in the grandstand. Is this going to be worth some pizza? Surely. One gentleman put two hands out. It popped then into the hands of the man in front of him. And now it's all on. No, it's not really, but... <laughs> Just getting back to that umpiring situation too, the, the idea of the Tuatara coming into the ABL has been fantastic for umpiring in New Zealand, giving umpires in New Zealand something to aspire to. And well, you've got to have pathways, don't you, Absolutely. for everybody, whether it be even at the administration level. If you want to be the GM in a professional club, well, you might start in the marketing department. You might even start in the media department, Dale Budge. <laughs> so as Kim draws the walk, wins that battle, full count. It's ball four. So runner on base, Andrew Mark to come. Then it starts to probably get just a little bit light in terms of the batting for the Tuatara with Richards, McAdams and Brown. But I'll tell you what, Max Brown, we've waited all summer for him to sort of really step up. Had a good series against Sydney in Sydney. Better performance against Canberra. First time we're seeing Blackley in the stretch position. We'll see how long it takes for him to throw over, sure enough. Here it is. That's not the A move, but you can see how he is very deceptive and many runners get caught leaning in the wrong direction. Have you ever seen that in all the baseball you've watched? Three players all three outs of one inning via the pickoff I have not but you're right he did that last year and I'm sure he would have liked to have retired them himself at the <laughs> plate but I think the players probably would have liked to have been retired at the plate too it was somewhat embarrassing for them for left-handed pitchers you have an imaginary 45 degree angle in which you have to step towards first base or in the general vicinity otherwise it's called a balk and the runner can advance 90 feet 
There has been some discussion about how legal his move is. I think talking to the Tuatara players, they felt, no, it's absolutely spot on. He, he does it to the absolute That gets away, and we will see Kim advance now to second. So he talked about the constraint from Blackley, how he hasn't thrown any wild pitches. And on the one pitch that is, just gets away from him. It's good news for Tuatara fans because suddenly Kim in scoring position. What, what is it about that move that is that makes it so successful? Some, obviously the deception somehow, the, the way he disguises it? Well, you cannot bring your front foot behind your back foot and then throw to first. You have to keep it uh, in front of your back foot. So Blackley, not only does he have the 45 degree angle down in which to step, he also brings his feet so close together, it looks like he's about to prepare to throw to home. So Andrew Mark this time. Strike call. So interesting to see Travis Watson there. He's not afraid to call strikes on the slightly higher pitches. We have seen some umpires being a little bit stingy in that area, but rewarding pitches for those balls in and around knee height. So Andrew Mark now. Very educated crowd in here today. You just sort of sense that they know what they're watching, they know what's at stake. Andrew Mark, can he look for an RBI? Single or double? We've got him swinging though. And so, good comeback from Blackley. And now the chance for Chris Richards, who was the hero last night defensively with one of the great catches, certainly in the short history of the ABL, uh, of the Tuatara, but also one of the great catches, I, I'd imagine, in the history of the ABL. Not so much, not that it hasn't been done before, but sometimes it's in the context of the game which adds to the greatness. Absolutely. Given the circumstances, that won the game for the Tuatara. And to do it against the defending champions in a clinching moment is pretty incredible. So Chris Richards looking to build the reputation. It's such a new park. There's plenty of incentive, isn't there, uh, Dale Budge, to have a part of the ground named after you? <laughs> I mean, Josh Colmint is probably, you know, looking around North Harbour Stadium. I imagine there's a small park that's going to have Colmint's name on it after that performance last night. Yeah, there's some talk about putting up some, some banners or some posters, some of the standout players and coaching staff that had major league careers. See what happens for next season. Good little battle here. Again unfolding. This time he goes long. Ladies and gentlemen, unbelievable. It is gone. A two-run home run for Chris Richards. Well, when luck goes your way, momentum follows. Chris Richards, stand up. That is brilliant. Defensively outstanding last night. Today, magnificent with the bat. Wow. Two Atara fans standing. Yeah, baby. He's just one of those types of players, Chris Richards. Another story for him. Sydney or the bush. Highlight real kind of player, isn't he? Oh, that is just great stuff. What a magical 24 hours or let's say 12, 15 hours for the sport here in this country. And Chris Richards at the heart of both of them. Well, that certainly sets the scene doesn't it for the Tuatara to try and win the division championship today as we now welcome Josh McAdams that's what Richards has been brought in onto this uh, lineup for to try and strengthen that bottom part of the roster which probably hasn't delivered quite as much as it had done earlier in the season and this time we tough not to get given the strike then you felt that it just painted the corner there of the inside plate but not given. Today we see more evidence of how important momentum can be in the game of baseball. Last night the Bandits left a man at second in the third and fourth innings. Bottom of the fourth, you get the game winning home run off the bat of Blackstone. And here today, the Bandits leave the bases loaded in the top of the second. Richards follows with a two run homer in the bottom half. Well, we, we talked about how poor, well I certainly mentioned how poor the Tuatara I oh, got him swung him out this time, so that is the third out, but it's been a good inning for the Tuatara as we head to the top of the third. It is the home team leading the Brisbane Bandits. Two runs to nothing.
Make Ramada by Wyndham your first choice for business and leisure travel in New Zealand. Whether it's big city comfort and style, or the perfect place to base your Kiwi adventure, watching a sunset at Castaways, or exploring the wonders of Queenstown, we welcome you to make every stay one to remember. Visit ramada.nz online for details and locations. Ramada by Wyndham, New Zealand. Part of the Marsden Group. Makita is changing the way you work outdoors. With its complete system of battery-powered, cordless outdoor power equipment that delivers the runtime and power of petrol without the hassles. Makita. Rule the outdoors. Well, North Harbour Stadium well and truly alive. They're enjoying this because in the bottom of the second, Chris Richards stepped up, hit a two-run home run, and it is the home team who lead two runs to nothing as we head to the top of the third. On the mound for the Tuatara is Ryota Okamoto, the Japanese player who plays his baseball here in New Zealand on Auckland's North Shore, lives on the North Shore, a somewhat unorthodox pitching style but also an unorthodox decision to start him but he's been very effective and it has been just a wonderful 20 odd hours for this club with the drama last night of a one run to nil victory that secured them a playoff berth and now the chance to secure the division championship alongside of me Eric Bremer the voice of the Brisbane Bandits and also Dale Budge bringing you all the expert analysis. Back to the top of the order. For the Brisbane Bandits, Tim Colwell, center fielder. And look at that just curveball. Almost took the umpire off guard with just how much speed he took off that. Verging on an EFIS pitch. Yeah. Describe an EFIS pitch to us just EFIS for our non-baseballing yeah, aficionados. It's an extreme changeup. Thrown very slowly. Yeah, that time a better curveball. He's got that, he's Q-tip that, again, just can't hold back. It is so slow. That Bandits players doing their best to try and hold back as long as they can. I'll be curious to see how long the leash is for Okamoto. We saw Jimmy Boyce warming up last inning, and he's throwing again in the Tuatara bullpen. I, I did I did hear, hear uh, four innings at, at best. I don't think we'd see him go beyond four innings. And, well, he's been a revelation, hasn't he? We, we know he's been used to, as you described him, he's been a loogie. Left-handed, you often just use for one batter. And this is just a comfortable fly ball, and the catch will be comfortably taken in centre field. So one up, one down. And Kim Wonsook, Kiwi Kim, taking the catch. Eric touched on the last inning just before we went to the commercial break about momentum and, and you know, those sort of moments. I just, I kind of wanted a couple of, key parts in the series, the, the back end of uh, Friday night's game, uh, bottom of the seventh, when Walker and Kim both hit home runs and just created just a little bit of confidence bit of momentum. for a team that it hadn't hit at all in those first two games, all of a sudden just created a little bit of something to take into the Saturday night. Yeah. The fact that Josh Cole meant to the, the, the two Atara players in their heart of hearts believed that he was going to give them what they needed to win the game. Oh, this time, that is long. And it is gone, so a home run. Just trying to pick that up, but it is a very, very good home run indeed from Logan Wade. He suddenly closes the gap, and North Harbour Stadium have gone quiet. Nobody quite picked that. Suddenly, have we just seen another momentum swing in what has just been a fascinating contest so far. And here comes the change, I think, to find. Let's take a look at this pitch. It was left up. Keep in mind, this is the second time that Wade was able to see Okamoto's pitching delivery, and he did not miss that pitch. Now, apologies just for the late call on that because it has to clear the teal monster there. If it, in fact, hits the wall, drops behind the hoardings there, it will just be an automatic stand-up double. So they do make the change. Jimmy Boyce now comes to the mound, just the one out, and a good time for the change, Dale. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, look, Okamoto has been a, a sort of lefty matchup specialist out of the bullpen in his, his career with the Tuatara to this point. So to get into the third inning, it more than done his job. He gets a really, really good quality Bandits lineup. You can see the adjustment second time through by Logan Wade. Good hitter. 
able to stay back and crush that one to deep left. Okamoto had thrown only three innings in the ABL season prior to today, yeah. and two of them came a couple nights ago against the Bandits. So if you've got a guy who doesn't have overpowering stuff, sometimes you have to get by on finesse, keeping hitters off balance. It gets tougher and tougher to do that the more familiar your opposition is with you. Yeah, and we talked, we, we used, you've used the terminology, we've talked about the terminology in the last couple of nights, the loogie. Now, your definition, and it's a term I hadn't heard before, but it's a left-hander used basically for one hitter. Yeah. They've got rid of that now in Major League Baseball. A pitcher comes on, they have to at least go through three hitters, but it's still alive in this league. And so it's a left-hander who's basically comes out what to shut another left-hander down. Yeah, because left-handers are accustomed to seeing mostly right-handed pitchers. There are far more right-handers than left-handers in professional baseball. You can throw in a lefty, and sometimes the arm angle can make it more difficult for a left-handed hitter to have success. Dale, let's talk about Jimmy Boyce. You've watched a lot of this guy come through the club ranks here in this country. and Oh, absolute workhorse, real toiler. Uh, his record last year probably didn't look that flash on, on paper, but he was much better in reality than, than what the numbers look like. Worked through with, with very little run support at times, with not a whole lot of... Uh, defensive support as well at, at various stages. And what, what, what does he bring? What's his default set? Uh, What's his go-to he, pitch? He, he throw four different pitches, I think, but he generally keeps one of them. He, he often likes to pitch holding one pitch back for the second time through the order. And he'll introduce that the second time round. So quite often that's the curveball. But we'll see how he goes today, pitching in relief. Yeah, certainly got a little bit more heat, hasn't he, than Ryota? Just not quite finding the strike zone at the moment. Finds itself behind on the count. Well, this is going to be interesting to see how manager Steve Mintz uses this bullpen throughout the rest of the game. We haven't seen Elliot Johnston in the series yet. And no, what a player I, he I is I think too. Johnston may have been the insurance policy had the Bandits won game three last night. We may have seen Johnston start today's game if it was a, a case of win and, and make the playoffs or lose and go home. So three balls. So well and truly behind the count. There's obviously some decisions to be made now that we are going to see some postseason action. If it's a one game winner takes a wild card but more, scenario. More importantly, I think though you, you want to win today's game and oh, I, ab absolutely, absolutely. And I let worry about. I think it's better to be facing Melbourne oh, and, and on I'm Thursday, sure that will be the, arguably the plan, Saturday and Sunday, than maybe just a one-off game here on a Tuesday night against the Perth Heat. In an ideal scenario, I, I assume that. The Tuatara would love to get a, a victory here without having to use Johnston, but if they feel the need arises, they will use it. So not a, a bad thing here, Jeremy Martinez walking him. I'm surprised, actually, that that hasn't maybe been an option at times. Such a danger player, Martinez. Pretty good player coming to the plate now, too, though. Yeah, where's Darfel? Boy, what a revelation he's been. Quality player playing third base today. A little bit of a shift on here. Hernandez playing on the right side of the infield. Okay, just take us through that, Dale. What have you observed? So just you can see the defensive position there. Yanni Hernandez coming across from the regular regulations at a sh shortstop position to be on the right side of second base. Blackstone playing back with the edge of the cutout. Chris Richards halfway between shortstop and third base. Second base and third base. Looking at Boyce's numbers, he is 3-1 and one on the year, but he has an earned run average of 6.62. He's also allowed 13 home runs in 35 and a third innings. So I think that's been the problem when he's hung the odd pitch and, and been really punished for it. He's pitched well in between, but... Well, he's just not struggling to find the strike zone here at the moment. This was the problem for the Tuatara on the first two games of this series. Really just struggled at times. And I wonder whether the message is, you talked about the number of home runs that have been hit off him. So what does he do here? He'd be aware that they have gone long at times. He's pretty calm, pretty calm sort of a character. I don't think having runners on base will get in his head. He's, he's you know, used to dealing with that better than, than a lot of other players. So. And he can work through adversity well. He's, he's done it right throughout his career. Had a fair few setbacks along the way. So Eric Bremer, the voice of the Brisbane Bandits, also alongside of myself and Dale Budge. I'll get you to tell us a little bit about where's Darfel. That was crushed foul. So it comes out of 
the independent leagues in the United States. Uh, but he's originally from Canada, and yes. he's, he's the shortstop on the Canadian national team. When he arrived to the Bandits, we were wondering, is he going to play shortstop, or are they going to try and find a different spot for him? Bandits have a pretty good shortstop, Logan Wade, who plays on the Australian national team. So they decided to put so this Darville be the at third. Play they've been looking for. This is good from the Tuatara. Got him safe at first, though. Great speed. Once again from Wes Darfel, wow, he just exploded out of the blocks to that 90 feet to first base, but the out at second, that is the good news for the Tuatara, but I've got to say Darfel, he was magnificent because there was nothing done wrong here from Yoni Hernandez and Kent Blackstone in terms of the play itself. Let's just have a look at the leg speed of this young man. Bang! Just great acceleration over those first three to four metres. Just keeps his head down, shortens the arms up, basic biomechanics and great call from the Terrific first plate call. umpire. That might be the difference between a left-handed hitter and a right-handed hitter. In a bang-bang play at first, those extra two meters that you get being in the left-handed batter's box can sometimes help you beat out a grounder like that. I thought the throw beat him at, uh, at first, first look. Brilliant call, Warren Van Ryan, first base umpire. So Wade Dutton next into the batting lineup. And Boyce there, nice little change up from Boyce. Wade Dutton can hit the ball as hard and as far to left field as anyone in this lineup. But you see how far away he is from the plate. Contrast that with Jared Walker of the Tuatara. A lot of his power and a lot of his contact ability goes to the opposite field. Yeah. And now looking to try and throw the runner out at second, but he will steal that base. So good running from Jeremy Martinez. It's a bit of a connection to that Canadian national oh, where's team. Where's Darfel? My apologies. It's his third stolen base in four tries. You saw the speed out of the box, and there he gets into scoring position. Now a single should tie this game. He played with a couple of uh, Tuatara players from season one on that Team Canada roster. Yeah, got him swinging, and that's it. So great start from Boyce. Got himself into a little bit of a hole there at the moment. The runner left stranded on second, and as we head to the bottom of the third, it is still a home team, the Tuatara, leading the Bandits two runs to one, but that gap has changed with a solo home run from Logan Wade over the Teal Monster. It's a compelling contest. It's been a compelling 24 hours in sport. And the hope is that the best is yet to come for the Tuatara. If they can win today, or even with a loss, if they can take the division as the Canberra Cavalry play later this afternoon, then they will have home field advantage at the very least in the semifinal round. And if they advance, they might even have it in the final round. Depending with, on what happens with Adelaide. Right, of course. Now, I understand Adelaide, too, with how the point system works here across the season, might be a little bit hamstrung, too, in terms of the quality of talent that they can put on the field. So maybe the team that's secured them their championship division and made them so sort of complete might somewhat be decimated by the fact that they've points loaded at the front of the season. The way that the playoff scheduling works as well in a best of three series means the home field advantage means you have games two and three at home, game one on the road. If the two Atara are going to clinch in the semifinal as division champions, it would come again here at their home ballpark, which would be a very special moment. The other factor in this is travel too, Eric, which is you know, I think if the Tuatara had, let's say they went through and won their division and, and came up against someone like the Perth Heat in the semifinals, I, I think you'd see the Tuatara opt to give up home field advantage to take the benefit of the travel factor. So Perth, who are in Perth currently, would have to fly all the way to Auckland, play a game here, and then both teams fly back to play games in Perth. There's, there's double the amount of travel for... Uh, and under that scenario, then flipping it around and going the other way where the Tuatara would have to travel all the way across, play a game, and then both teams travel back. So it doesn't look like that's going to, well, won't be the case now. It'll be Heat in a wild card game. Either against Tuesday us night, or Canberra. Or it would be... So downtown Max Brown Melbourne. looking to try and go long. A good little opportunity to bunt here, and they'll look to try and pick him off at first. Brilliant Not pick play. him off, but brilliant piece of play there. So very much a 5-3 play. Third baseman for... The Brisbane Bandits, simply magnificent. Wes Darfel, we talked about his speed in terms of getting to first base earlier. Oh, wonderful bare-handed pick up and throw. He got rid of the ball extremely quickly off balance. Oh, oh, Perfect oh, throw. Oh, oh, good for Max Brown too, just to try and mix it up, just bring a little bit of variety here. I think it was the right play. Just to lead off 
the bottom of the third here. Just put a little bit of doubt into the mind of Travis Blackley. Oh, yeah. Asked yeah. a question, didn't he? But Darvo <laughs> had the answer. It gives us an opportunity to revisit a couple things that we discussed. Darville at third base is a shortstop by trade, so he's more mobile than your average third baseman. He's playing out of position. And also Blackley, though he's Ooh. healthy now, has dealt with some leg injuries in recent memory. So he's been tested all season long as players get that scouting report, and they want to see if he can spring off the mound and field his position. So back at the top of the order, good news for the Tuatara. So Yoni Hernandez, shortstop, been in the action. Finds himself behind on the count, though. So Blackley, mixing Tell you what, it up, changing it up, doing a great job so far. Yari Hernandez does not speak a whole lot of English. Uh, he's not the most vocal player in the team, but he has had a running battle this weekend in this series with whichever home plate umpire has been uh, operating. He's not seen eye to eye. And I think, to be fair, the plate umpires have had it right most of the time, too. This time, foul ball away. Souvenir for somebody in the crowd. Beautiful day here at North Harbour Stadium. So we could be back here Tuesday night if they lose today and Canberra Cavalry win. It'll be a all or nothing game against the Perth Heat. I don't think that's a dead rubber game either, the Sydney Canberra series. Those two teams have a, a fierce rivalry. I don't think there's a whole lot of. Well, I don't think anybody's going to be doing any favours. I, oh, I don't think the Brisbane not, Bandits are coming here going, oh, we like the Auckland Tuatara, let's do them a favour. I don't, as, as you mentioned, Eric, I think the teams and the players respect the game too much for that. Oh, look, teams will, teams will try it hard, but, you know, when you, you're till the end of a long season and whether you're at, you know, 100% or 99%, that, that 1% difference could be the, the difference between winning and losing a game. So I guess yeah. what I'm saying is it would be easy for Sydney to have clocked off. They've been out of contention really this whole weekend. Now, now they would love to get one over the Cavs. We, 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 people will be aware that the season started in November and suddenly it's January we're talking about the playoffs and a lot of people at home be going, boy, what a short season. Well, the reality is they actually play 40 regular season games. So it is a very long season in terms of the number of games that have been played. If you compare it to the likes of rugby, compare it to the likes of cricket. This time, a single to centre field. Oh, the other thing, Mark, too, here is most of these players are playing somewhere else in the world season year round. And so this is almost their, their winter league or their off-season so, you know, in the case of these affiliate players or the independent players that have been playing in North America, it's been a very long season. And the only break they're going to get is between now and when spring training starts. So this next two, three, four weeks is, you know, the longer the, the playoffs go and the longer that eats into their little short off-season. And spring training starts earlier and earlier every year. This year, the Major League Baseball season has shifted forward a bit to accommodate for the 2020 presidential election in early November. They're starting the regular season and I think the 26th of March, which is the earliest it's ever been, that means that spring training gets bumped up earlier and that very valuable time where you're not taxing your body to baseball activities gets shorter as well. And we've seen that with Kyle Goloski too. He is back in spring training, still here in New Zealand at the moment. Can't be far away from junk and near planning, going back to the Philadelphia Phillies organization. Blackstone looking to drive something down that right field line into foul territory. You're talking about respecting the game and playing hard, even though for the Bandits, their season will end today. There is a long storied tradition in baseball of having some fun on the last day of the year if there's nothing at stake. So if these were two teams who were not moving on to the playoffs, you might see one team use one bat through the entire game. Once they're done with their at bat, they leave it on the plate and the next guy will pick it up. Of course, most players use their own bats and protect them with their life but in the final game of a season sometimes you see them try and have a little fun with things yeah it's great and that's great too i think that's also part of the spirit of the game and if they're established traditions there's nothing wrong with it because of the game it's respecting the game let's have a look here pick off movers hernandez goes. goes and this time it is long is it going to be no it's a two run at the moment and the runner will come home and score the tuatara will go to a 3-1 to run lead, a triple for Kent Blackstone. What a player. What another great moment for the Tuatara. It looked like a home run. It is the longest part of the ground, but it just dropped short. Well, but Blackstone bit... showed plenty of speed as well, and he brings home Yoni Hernandez, and suddenly the Tuatara in scoring position with a runner on third. 398 feet, I think. They missed by a couple. Karam's off the centre field wall, longest part of the ground. Hernandez just had to hold up at second for a moment to see whether the catch was going to be made and whether he'd have to get hit back to first. But well, Yoni Hernandez was gone, easily. wasn't he? Hernandez was gone in terms of trying to steal second. Got a great jump. 
But boy, some great speed there from Blackstone as well. And I just wonder, too, in regards to the centre fielder for the Brisbane Bandits is Jim Cowell. Is he, a, is he described that? Is he seen as a good defensive player? Does he have an arm in the league that you should fear? Yeah, I think his arm most would describe as uh, an average arm, but he has tremendous foot speed. In American baseball, he's had double-digit stolen bases for each of the last few years. So Colwell plays a good center field. This is just a deeper center field than what he's accustomed to playing at One Hub Stadium. The band is playing. Again, without uh, a warning track here, he probably uh, didn't know exactly where the wall was going to be. Yeah, that's something certainly that uh, they need to... They need to uh, look at for next season. Oh, this time track. Johnny Homs up. Looks to go over the fence, but that's just a pop-up, and that should be a comfortable catch taken by the second baseman. And it is, so uh, two outs now for the Tuatara, but runner in scoring position. So a good catch taken from Grant Kay. Had to run around, and good communication between him and Logan Wade, the shortstop, in terms of who was going to take that pop-up. Infield was in, and they almost got burned. You play infield in so you can cut down the run at the plate. But if that pop-up had a little less hang time, then maybe it falls in. It wasn't an easy catch in the finish, was it? Particularly Both of the middle infielders have their sunglasses on. It's a high, mostly cloudless sky today. Sometimes you can lose the ball in the sun. There's actually quite a lip, too, between yeah, the sort of edge of the cutout and the grass. A, a lot deeper. It's almost two, two, three inches even in places. Uh, just, I think there was a lot of uh, some issue here with uh, how hard the infield was in the last series. A fair few errors being made by good players. So box office Walker steps up to try and extend the lead. Two outs, though. Get some swinging. So good comeback from Travis Brackley. Have we seen anybody warming up in the bullpen over there, Eric, at all for the Bandits? Not for the Bandits, because Blackley hasn't been able to go deep into a ball game here in a couple weeks because of the weather. I would imagine they'll try and get him as deep into the ball game as they can, and then maybe mix it up with the bullpen and get some guys some work. What, even if they are leaking runs? We'll see. Okay, this time Walker breaks the bat. That might just fall into safe territory, and it will be an RBI single to Jared Walker. So just hits the bottom of the bat, breaks the bat. That takes any momentum off the ball, and that is the luck that they didn't have in games one and two. Suddenly falls their way. It's almost been a turnaround because that was very much the story of the Brisbane Bandits through the first two games. Anything they hit seemed to find terra firma. Not the case. Blackstone will come across and score. Great news. It is now four runs to one in the bottom of the third. They hit pretty well in games one and two, to be fair. I thought the Bandits were superb in the first two games. You're right. There's definitely been a momentum shift. The body language, the Tuatara, they're up. They're having fun. They're a smile. I mean, that's been the, the hashtag that Stephen Mintz created right before the season started, follow the fun. And, uh, you know, the team bought into it. It's been a happy environment despite some of the hurdles that they've faced. Just thought on Thursday night, Friday night, the pressure, the, the situation of needing, being that close, but knowing that it's a difficult task, just didn't seem to be having quite as much fun. And that was back last night, thanks to Josh Colmender. So Kiwi Kim has a swing at the first pitch, a pitch that he probably didn't need to swing at. Owen won the count. Blackley is a very emotional guy on the mound. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. Which is great. Yeah, he's used that to his advantage. There's a reason he's stuck around as long as he has. It's because he has a passion for the game. But here, with a couple bad breaks against him, he'll need to keep his emotions in check and get out of this jam without losing his head. But, but see, I think it's part of the problem why so much sport here in New Zealand, like rugby, there's not that engagement anymore because everybody's been shut down. You're not allowed to be emotional. Everybody says the same thing. You're not allowed to wear your heart on your sleeve anymore. A and people just switch off. They want entertainment. They want us, they want to, you know, they want to come out and see that. That's part of the entertainment package. They want to see the raw emotion that sport offers. Yeah, you want, you want characters, don't you? You know, over here at away teams, he's he's a villain. He's the villain, and you need a, you need that. And back home, he's the hero. When and, and Walker's a villain, it's it's what sports about. And, you know, I, I hope that he continues. It'd be great to see him in action again next season. Oh, brilliant! So Kiwi Kim, one ball, one strike. Foul ball away. That is a difficult pitch, isn't it? We talked about that, Eric, yesterday. That that fast. That high ball that's just almost at chest height. Very, very difficult for a batter to get away. Yeah. Something Atherton did brilliantly yesterday. If you can hit it hard, it's going to go a long way, but 
by approaching the eye level of the batter, sometimes you can change their swing. And anytime you change a batter's swing, you usually get a good result for the well, pitcher. Well, I think if anybody picks up a bat and swings, you tend to find that the comfortable part of where the barrel swings across is probably between your hips and your halfway between your hips and your ch chest. So you get that ball above that. And so that brings the Tuatara inning to a close, but it's been a good inning for the Tuatara. They lead the Brisbane Bandits four runs to one as we head to the top of the fourth. Would you like to run your own business and get out from behind that desk? Become a Kelly Sports franchisee. Join a national movement and help transform future generations. We'll provide all the necessary training. Get in touch today at kellysports.co.nz. Makita is changing the way you work outdoors. With its complete system of battery-powered, cordless outdoor power equipment that delivers the runtime and power of petrol without the hassles. Makita's fast charging lithium ion batteries and technology powers over 225 products to deliver unmatched performance. The LXT cordless system takes you from power tools to outdoor power equipment to get the job done. Makita, rule the outdoors. When was the last time you experienced something exciting? When was the last time you experienced luxury and sheer elegance? When was the last time you experienced complete bliss? Have you driven a Ford lately? Test drive one today at John Andrew Ford on the corner of Great North Road in Newton. Number one by choice, not by chance. We love saying that. Welcome back to North Harbour Stadium, where as we head to the top of the fourth inning, the Auckland Tuatara lead the Brisbane Bandits by a score of 4-1. to one. First pitch misses wide ball one from Jimmy Boyce to Mitch Nielsen. It'll be 6-7-8 and eight due up for the Bandits, Nielsen, Kay, and Lutz against Boyce beginning his first full inning of work. I can't let you... I can't, I can't leave this commentary box before <laughs> I get a prediction from you, Eric. Give us a... An assessment, who do you think, who do you like in this postseason? Who stands out for you most? Well, I don't want to give you a hard and fast answer, but I do think that it will be interesting to see how the two teams currently leading their divisions, the Adelaide Giants, who have locked up the Southwest, and the Tuatara, who are leading the Northeast, how they fare in the playoffs, because while they are the best teams record-wise in their respective divisions, they're also very young clubs. The Adelaide Giants have been the best team all season long, their year began with a four-game sweep over the Bandits in Adelaide. But experience matters in the playoffs. And without the Bandits, the most experienced team in this league, as one of the five teams, someone else will have to take charge. Mitch Nielsen gets Son. fooled and a pitch down and away. The count. You, you just fancy Canberra. To me, Canberra looked like they have come right at the right point of the time. Not how you start, how you finish. And no, well, we, they've been you, very good. So often in sport, don't you? You see that team that just gets that momentum. You see it a lot in rugby league in this part of the world, where a team that's sort of just outside of the top eight suddenly gets a bit of a momentum and goes on a bit of a streak through the playoffs. As we see a walk there from Boyce at the top of the fourth, and so Mitch Nelson will find himself on first base. Maybe I'd imagine looking to try and no trailing four one. Yeah, probably going to. Look to try and steal second. Grant K. Oh, I like K. There's just something about him. He's just very orthodox. He, he, he just looks like the epitome of a pure baseball player. Not a big man. Of the two mid-season additions for the Bandits this year on the position player front, Darville and K. Darville took much more quickly to the ABL. He was hitting from the moment he stepped off the plane. Kay took a little bit of time, but he has been a great addition as well. Now that he's gotten his feet settled, good from the jet leg worn off. A little curveball there from Boyce. What happened to the uh, Canadian uh, shortstop second baseman you had last year? Was superb. Um, uh, you might be thinking of Riley Unruh. No, no, no. It was um, uh, T.J. Bennett. T.J. Bennett. Yeah. 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 T.J. Bennett uh, has retired. His dad, Jim Bennett, is the Bandits pitching coach. Uh, T.J. played in American baseball this past year, but then was offered a full-time position uh, coaching in the collegiate ranks. Okay, so the runner will now advance to second. Mitch Nelson. 
So that's just a bit of a wayward pitch from Jimmy Boyce. Yeah, TJ led the league in home runs and he didn't come back. That's uh, one way to go out, isn't it? Yeah, he was terrific last year. I keep forgetting that TJ is Canadian because um, he grew up as the son of a coach and he traveled all around North America wherever his dad was working. Gets plenty on this. It'll be a foul ball down the right field line, though. No sign of anyone else up on the Tuatara pin. And plenty of arms to go to if they want to use them. Emerson Martinez, I thought he would be one of the first cabs off the rank. So runner in scoring position, no outs. And not too far away, <laughs> Donald Lutz. We know how good he is, and David Sutherland to come. So plenty of batting for this Bandits team. What can Kay do here? Ooh, just get to a little bit away from Boyce. One last question before I head off. Yeah. Seven inning games, your thoughts? I think New Zealand is the perfect place to try it out. I don't think it will or should ever make it to Major League Baseball. Nah, too much history, too many statistics, too many yep. records. But with a market here that is familiar with men's softball, which uh, is played in the seven inning format, and in so many things here are just slightly different anyway, might as well give it a try. Can you see other ABL teams looking at the concept a bit more? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I think it is good that there will only be nine inning games played in the postseason. That will even the playing field a bit. But no, I'm while I am a traditionalist in some respects. This is long. Oh, here we go. This could be gone, and it is out of the park. And that is just an outstanding piece of play from Grant K. A two-run home run, and suddenly it is four runs to three. The four-time defending champions are not done yet. They come back with an outstanding piece of play from Grant K. And we've talked about Jimmy Boyce. If there's that one weakness, it is giving up the home runs. And that is another example of it. That's yeah. Grant K's first ABL home run. And if this is indeed his final game in a Bandits uniform, we don't know what the future will hold. He will forever be able to say that he hit a home run in the Australian Baseball League. And it was a no-doubter. Look at where this ball landed. Yeah, he got all of that. Absolutely. So That's Don prompted some, uh, some activity in the bullpen to Elliot Johnston, that man we talked about up now, loosening up. And this should be a ground out to third. And gets the job done. And so that is a good comeback from Boyce. One out. So Donald Lutz swings at the first pitch. Now David Sutherland up, and then it's back to the top of the order. So the Brisbane Bandits got plenty of batting power to come. Just want to acknowledge two of the sponsors and the commercial partners of the Tuatara. If you are thinking about accommodation around the country, do check out Ramada Hotels. I can vouch for that. Good digs? Absolutely. They treated us very well down the street. It just paints the outside corner there. No balls, one strike. Also had lunch at uh, Sal's Authentic New York Pizza, Browns Bay, yesterday. You're yeah. good at this, aren't you? Yeah. Pizza goes good too, doesn't and it? And it goes long. And it is a foul ball down the left field line. Just had to wait there. Very hard to pick it up sometimes, both on television and with the brightness of the sky today here at North Harbour Stadium. I know how important sponsors are to the viability and the success of a franchise both on the field and off. So just having a look at Elliot Johnston, wonderful revelation. He might just be the first legitimate New Zealander come through the age group ranks here to make the majors. There's been a bit of interest in him based on what he's done as Jimmy Boyce now. That's another good comeback here. Oh, great piece of play there from Blackstone. Brilliant. So that's a better comeback. So one out away from wrapping up the top of the fourth, but Tim Colwell the lead-off hitter for the Brisbane Bandits up next. Uh, Dale, I want to ask you, I mean, you were a very good age group cricketer growing up in that sort of county's Manukau region or central districts, but baseball's your passion. It's the game that you ended up taking. What is it that you love about the sport of baseball? What is it? I mean, I'm, I'm not certainly here to have the discussion what's better between cricket, because I love my cricket like everybody, but... 
I just, somebody love, I just love the battles, the battles within the game, um, you know, and the, the sum of all parts, all that sort of stuff, that you, you're just another cog in the wheel, whereas cricket's more of a, it is a team sport, but it seems to be more of an individual, you play almost more as an individual, certainly as a batsman anyway, you play more individually than, unless it's a, it's just such a contest, you, you rely on your, your teammates more so than you do in other team sports. And, and I guess if you go out once in baseball, you can get to come back three more times oh, in a know, game. I, I spent a fair bit of time <laughs> as an opening batsman in cricket. I tell you what, you, you get out first ball and you sit there and watch everyone else play for the rest of the day. It get a little bit boring. Baseball, you make a horrible out. You get another opportunity a few outs time. And a high fly ball. A bit, and coming around to try and take the catch and should take the catch and wrap the innings up. Again, very good play from Josh McAdams. So, Jimmy Boyce... Got to say, he came back nicely after giving up that two-run home run to Grant Kate. So certainly game on, quite in North Harbour Stadium, the Grant K home run. Tim Colwell made the final out there of the fourth inning. Not sure what the future holds for him. Tim's a good guy and uh, has interest beyond the game of baseball, which is always a healthy thing to have. Whatever comes next for Tim, we wish him the best. He's been a great addition to this Bandits club and clubhouse. Travis Blackley back on the mound for the fourth, trying to put up a zero. Retired the first four many face, but has allowed the two-run homer to Richards in the second and the RBI triple to Blackstone. The difference right now in the game is the infield single for Jared Walker, and that was a good pitch by Blackley. He sawed off Walker, but the broken bat doink fell in the middle of the infield and was kicked away by Darville. Right now, that is the go-ahead run for the Tuatara. We'll see how Mark Richards and McAdams fare against Blackley as they see him for the second time. So the crowd, well, most of them hiding in the shade underneath the main stands at the moment, but it's a good crowd and record crowd last night, just over 2,000 people, 2,500 people last night, and I'd imagine it's getting up around the 2,000 if you sort of look through the stands to the left and the right, a lot more people filling up the right-hand side of the stadium now. So there's a lot of people under the shade just enjoying the corporate hospitality. Plenty to do for the kids too. So it is a wonderful day out at the park and the season will continue for the Tuatara. What capacity? Will it be just a one-off game on Tuesday night? Winner take all. And if Tuatara to win that, of course, there would be they would progress. Or if they can win today, they'll win the division championship and then we'll have probably two games back here next weekend. More than likely against Melbourne. A team who early in the season swept the Tuatara. But it's a very different looking Tuatara team at the pointy end of the season. Different looking Melbourne team as well. It's another one of these ABL clubs that decided to go the route of picking up some players on contract in Asia. Looking at the Melbourne roster, they lost a couple of their players at the new year. So Andrew Mark. Finds himself well ahead and truly on the count. Good start for the bottom of the fourth for Mark. There's the criticism in the first two games. The batter's finding himself behind on the count. And what we mean by that, the pitcher having the strikes on the board. And now Mark gets walked. I tell you what, Travis Blackley is not happy. He really just asked the questions there of Travis Watson, the home plate umpire. You can just have a look at the body language here after that is not given. And just have a look here, let's just see if we can see it. Look, throws his arms in the air and says, come on. And then we talked to Josh Coleman for about this. Sometimes it's up to the pitcher to try and convince the home plan umpire what the strike zone should be. With Mark in his stance, it looked like he crossed at the letters across to Atara on the jersey. Standing up, it was at his waist. And I don't blame Travis Blackley for wanting that pitch. Right. So now Chris Richards, who already homer today, Tuatara off to a one run to nothing lead. Has a wee look. Ball called. You expect now the strike will come. So Richards, does he feel like he's got a free swing here? It's 
wonderful battle. And this time strike is called. So just clipping that outside corner of the plate. We touched briefly on what comes next for the Bandits, and besides specific roster decisions, we've seen manager David Nielsen, perhaps at the expense of short-term success, put some of his younger players in the lineup on a regular basis. He wants to make sure that this team is prepared for whatever comes next. That ball into the dirt runner remains on first. Got to be careful, we've talked about just how good Travis Blackley is in terms of picking runners up, looking to try and steal first or trying to steal second, or even trying to steal third. Arguably the best in the world at it. If we get a camera angle, as I know we have, of Blackley throwing towards first, look at his feet, his hips, and his shoulders, and try and predict along with the runner if he's throwing home or to first. And foul ball away. So Andrew Mark still finds himself anchored at first. So Johnny Southey, the first plate, first base coach for the Tuatara. I'm just reminding Andrew Mark of the danger here of not getting too far ahead of himself. As I like to say, you've got to be careful you don't confuse ability with ambition. If you're not an explosive runner against a guy like Travis Blackley, you're probably better just to stay put. That ball on the inside, so just wondering where the Blackley now just starting to, he's just lost a little bit of that rhythm we saw early on. We talked about it, he's been, had his momentum throughout the season broken by some bad weather. And perhaps had the game time that he had hoped for. And there is an example of the danger of Travis Blackley. So even when he throws to first base, you see his hips open up a little bit, his shoulders turn as if he's delivering home. And you can't be caught as a runner looking at one specific thing because his whole body is in motion and it is intended to deceive the runner. So full count, looking to try and strike Richards out. That is a high ball, so suddenly runners on first and second. Blackley just not happy at all. He says, come on, where is that strike zone? I played at the highest level in this sport. I know what my strike zone is. We need to try and somehow get you on the same page. Now it looks like the Bandits will start oh. warming up someone in their bullpen. It appears to be Joe Filomino, the lefty. Let's I, take I, a look at this 3-2 pitch. A, yeah, Andrew Mark, I think, probably had reason to be upset. I'm not sure that he had as much reason to be upset then. No, the Mark pitch was a better pitch than that one. But I think there's just a general frustration from Blackley that's mounted over the course of you, the You afternoon. said that he's a guy who wears his heart on his sleeve, and we do like that, don't we? Yes, Now, absolutely. Josh McAdams, and we've seen McAdams pitch too in this series, came in the other night and pitched, now looking to try and bunt. A little sacrifice, is it? They look for the out there. And so a nice 1-3 play, but the good news is two Atari runners advance to, from first to second and second to third. So runners now in scoring position with just the one out. So great job done there from Chris Richards. Now traditionally, in fact, you, Josh McAdams, my apologies. Max you, Brown up next. You would want to drop this bunt down the third baseline, but because Blackley is left-handed, his momentum carries him to that side. He's more naturally inclined to defend the left side of the field. So he tried to push it to the right side, but Blackley is still agile enough to spring off the mound, field it, and throw to first. He might have had a play at third base, but he decided to go with the more sure out at first. So a single here from... Brown will see a runner score. Good fast inside ball pitch too. So that is a good strike. Just using that little slider. Infield playing in here in a one run game. So I'll just get you for our listeners just to explain sure. what they're doing. The infielders are on the lip of the infield grass trying to play in so that if they hit a ball in their direction, and you Max go. Brown now, and that will be a 5 3 play. And so Max Brown. Not so good. Just like that, Darville was in close enough where the runner at third, Andrew Mark, should not have and correctly did not try and break for the plate. This ball was hit right at West Darville at third base, and because he was in, charging on it, the ball got to him quicker. Had Mark tried to score, he would have been a dead duck at home. 
Instead, an easy play at first for out number two, and now the infield can afford to play back at normal depth. So you'll hear us referring to numbers like 5-3 play. Every player on a field is given a number. The pitcher is one, catcher is given the number two, third base three, second base four, third base five, shortstop is six, and then you go around your left field seven, your center field eight, your right field nine. So you'll hear the commentators often talk about a 6-3 play, which means that a shortstop to first base. That is a high fastball. The ball is cool. Blackley again unhappy. Hernandez, though, naturally has a shorter uh, strike zone because he doesn't have as much stature in the box as an Andrew Mark or a Chris Richards. And Tuatara would be looking to try and just see if they can break the shackles here. They'll be disappointed if they can't bring a runner home. Top of the order, Yoni Hernandez. That time, strike is called. Painting the inside corner of the plate. So Hernandez, one ball, one strike. Jeremy Martinez is the catcher for the Brisbane Bandits. Wonderful player. It's really up to him to have a bit of a read or have done the analysis on the Tuatara batting lineup, and he'll be communicating with Travis Blackley in terms of what he believes the weakness of a certain player might be, and therefore the type of pitch to throw. One thing with Yoni Hernandez is that he's got a very good on-base percentage, and therefore versus his actual batting average, Hernandez coming into the series batting at just 229, so under one and well, just over one in every four at bats he is getting himself on base but an on base percentage of 407 which says that he is walked a lot which says that he's happy to have a look and that again strike is cool this time Hernandez is not that happy about it and Yoni asks a question and I just wonder now whether Travis Blackley might have just won a little bit of a battle here with Travis Watson the home plate umpire Two and two, now the count. Well, for all of Hernandez's skills, he has not yet hit a home run. He's more of a singles hitter, so Blackley feels comfortable pitching him up in the zone, knowing that at worst, it's probably going to be a fly up. So he's what they appropriately call the table setter. The fly ball won't cut it. It'll bring the third out. Foul ball's that one away. So no room for a sacrifice fly here. With first base open, you, of course, don't have to pitch to Hernandez. You can decide to pitch around him, but then you have the bases loaded and Kent Blackstone, who hit the RBI triple off the center field wall his last time up. Blackley will pitch carefully, but pitch with the intent of retiring Hernandez. This time, Yoni Hernandez looks for... And it's a great piece of play from the first baseman to bring the Tuatara inning to a close. Well, that is absolutely magnificent. Um, from David Sutherland, very good 5-3 play in the finish. The throw from Wes Darfel, well, it wasn't quite the throw that he'd hoped for, but magnificent piece of athleticism. Reached out Sutherland and really has kept this Bandits game, the Bandits team well and truly in game four. As we head, though, to the top of the fifth, it is still the home team, the Tuatara, leading the defending champions four runs to three. wants to look their best at the ballpark and you'll look even better on game day caps shirts singlets there's a huge range of awesome products including getting your own personalized tuatara playing strip made while you wait head online to aucklandtuatara.com and make sure you hit the stadium store at tuatara park at north harbour stadium in person show your support and wear your tuatara with pride
Well, welcome back to Tuatara Park, a.k.a. North Harbour Stadium. An intriguing contest, the Tuatara with a one-run lead over the Brisbane Bandits looking to try and win the division championship and have an automatic semi-final, probably against Melbourne later in the week. If they are to lose today, the Canberra Cavalry beat the Sydney Blue Sox. We'll be back here on Tuesday night for a one-off wild card game. And I'd imagine... Tuatara trying to avoid that. It has been a fascinating contest. The Bandits throughout the series demonstrating why they are the four-time champions. And Jimmy Boyce this time gives up a single to right field. And so a good start at the top of the fifth for the Bandits. Last time Logan Wade was at the plate, he batted as a righty against Ryota Okumoto and hit a home run here doing it from the other side of the plate. Pretty tough to have that hand-eye coordination looking at the ball from both sides of the plate. What they affectionately call a switch hitter. And now Jeremy Martinez didn't see him last night. That ball just getting away from Boyce. Want to know the count. We saw Okumoto have success his first trip through the Bandits' order and then run into trouble his second time through. This at bat will begin Jimmy Boyce's second trip through the Bandits' order. Well, Elliot Johnston on the mound in the bullpen this time. Curve ball, high. So finds himself behind on the count. Doesn't want to get himself into too big a hole here, Boyce. He, he, you talked about it, Eric, and I'll get you to bring out his statistics for Jimmy Boyce, but he has given up a lot of home runs this season. And that's just what he's got to learn, is just when to throw that pitch and when not to. Now the homer he allowed to Grant Kay was his 14th of the year, and now 37 and a third innings. Saw a wonderful display of pitching yesterday from Atherton. Arguably Australia's best pitcher for the Bandits, just giving up the one run to Kent Blackstone, but Josh Colmenter, Tuatara's most experienced player, went through the entire seven inning, giving up just two hits and a shutout performance. Now Boyce asking the question of why that perhaps wasn't a strike, but that is one thing I can say of Travis Watson, consistent in that area. So finds himself behind on the count. Martinez is a danger. Oh, this time inside, and another runner on base, and I wonder whether we might just have a change here for the Tuatara. Steve Mintz, the coach, now coming out onto the mound, and I think we'll see Elliot Johnston. So runners on first and second, runners in scoring position for the Bandits. And there he is. He is done for the day, Jimmy Boyce. So Elliot Johnston onto the mound. What a season he's had. A lot of interest from the major league clubs around this young man. Worked effectively with Jared Koenig on a number of occasions. One-two punch. I was impressed with Johnston when we saw him in Brisbane a few weeks ago. On the year, he's 3-1 and one with an ERA of just 1.19. And that's not a small sample size either. 22 and two-thirds innings. He's allowed only three earned runs and only 14 hits in that span. 25 strikeouts as well. Johnston comes in here in an unenviable position. First and second, nobody out in the cleanup hitter, Wes Darville, coming in. Looking back to Johnston's first outing against the Bandits. That came in the series finale, in relief of Jimmy Boyce, actually. And uh, he went three scoreless innings, allowing only one hit. That was a game that the Bandits scored five runs in the first inning, but Auckland came back and won 9-5, to five, thanks in no small part due to Johnston stabilizing things on the pitching side. Hope you're enjoying live baseball on a beautiful long weekend here in Auckland. Anniversary Monday, of course, anniversary day tomorrow for the Upper North Island. Just simply remarkable weather. It is just simply stunning. No real breeze, a little bit more of a northerly. So the northerly almost sort of behind Elliot Johnston, or certainly coming across his pitching arm, but very little breeze to talk about. 
flags are just fluttering in the background. I'll be heading back to Australia here uh, later in the evening and then back to the States not long after that. But I just want to say to all of our New Zealand viewers, everyone has been so gracious here. I've enjoyed my time. I think I've done the country justice by keeping myself busy these last few days. You've been out to Piha, haven't you? Piha Beach, Coast? Browns Bay. I uh, did Hobbiton a couple mornings ago, and that's, you know, it doesn't feel like too basic of a tourist thing because I did have to drive about three hours to get there. You take some level of effort to go down there, but that was wonderful. And uh, no, it's been a, a tremendous time here, and I hope to be back someday. No, I'm sure we'll. Sure, we'll have you back, Eric. Okay, so key moment in the game. Runners on first and second. Elliot Johnston straight down Broadway first up. Got a great arm on him. RC on the uniform, of course, in memory of Ryan Costello. Got to keep rem remembering that. And this whole season dedicated to the young man. So, Elliot Johnston. Jeremy Martinez. Where's Darfel? Darfel it is. Another strike two. So good change here from Steve Mintz. What does Elliot Johnston throw now? And got him swinging. So very much intense, so good start. So one up, one down for Johnston, but still runners in scoring position on first and second. And I got Wade Dutton coming up. He leads the team and runs batted in, but he hasn't put the ball in play today. A walk and a strikeout. Good speed at second in Logan Wade, and he represents the tying run. You can see, once we get a wide shot, how deep the outfield is playing. The left fielder, Mark, is almost in the shadow of the teal monster. So they don't want to let anything get to the gap. It's close to a no doubles defense. This time into the dirt from Johnson. First sort of a wayward pitch from him. Great to see this fan support. Seems to be a very intelligent fan base as well that knows their way around the game. Well, I, I think being a softballing country, I, I think New Zealand, most New Zealanders understand the basic fundamentals because I, mean, I think the basic fundamentals across both games are similar in terms of how the game works, the number of outs, the inning, the different types of ways you can go out. Great catch from Kent Blackstone and keeps the runner stuck on first and second. So he's been everywhere, Blackstone, today. Some brilliant play at second base. And so the danger man, Dutton, he finds himself back in the dugout. But Mitch Nelson, the designated hitter, up next. Dutton got jammed, I think. Let's see. Yeah, look looked to be in on the hands a little bit. Sometimes those can flutter into the outfield because an infielder gets a bad read on it. They think it's hit harder than it actually is. So four runs to three. Runner, though, in scoring position. Elliot Johnson doing the job asked of him. Two up, two down. But now, Mitch Nielsen gets him swinging. You can see where the second baseman Blackstone began shading up the middle. He had a long distance to cover. I would like to just get an American's perspective on sure. this, but just talking about the summer game here traditionally is cricket. You must be amazed at some of the catches they take in that game because Absolutely. they take some remarkable catches and the ball is traveling and it's a harder ball than a, probably a baseball. Without gloves. Without gloves, they take some remarkable catches. But it is a very different sport again. The fielding, the brilliance that you see in baseball again is equally as impressive as we saw last night. The catch from Chris Richards on the fence, and if you haven't seen it, Get on the Facebook page of the Australian Baseball League or the Tuatara Baseball Facebook page. You can see it, see it in itself it was just a wonderful piece of athleticism. Baseball evolved from cricket. And until the later part of the 19th century in America, it was played straight, without a glove. Straight down Broadway, yeah. Two and two. Now some of the catches they take in cricket, it still just amaze you even growing up having played and watched the game. 
and what you're expected to catch. Oh, good. Ask for the strike. Doesn't get it, though. So get you, give me your read on that, Eric. This was a chase pitch. I think he hit the target down and in. You want to aim that breaking ball at the back foot of the hitter because if they swing, there's no chance they can do anything about it. Now the count is three and two, and both runners will have a chance to leave early. That'll give them a head start in case the ball is put in play. I think he just goes straight down here, Elliot. He got him this time. It should be a comfortable ground out to second base. Kent Blackstone back in the action. Does it quite simple to Josh McAdams at first. And so the job asked of him, done brilliantly. And so now we go to the bottom of the fifth to Atara have a chance to extend this lead. See, most of the fans are down underneath in the shade, and that's where I'd be, too. In fact, that's where we are. We're in the shade, and it's the right place to be on a day like today. This is a tradition, Sweet Caroline, that uh, originated with the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park. The Brisbane Bandits also play Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond during their seventh inning stretch. Since there isn't a seventh inning stretch here in Auckland playing seven inning games, you guys do it in the fifth. Certainly a wonderful atmosphere. And we'll have a better picture at the end of this game of how things might pl play out in terms of the postseason. There will be games here at North Harbour Stadium. We want to get more people along, get them and come enjoy the best show in town. Pitching Great change for the Bandits here. Joseph Filomino coming on in relief of Travis Blackley, who is done for the season, perhaps for his ABL career. For Blackley, he allowed four runs on four hits. He struck out six batters. He leaves on the hook for the loss, but he hopes that his offense can score a couple runs here and make this a Bandits win to end the season. Filomino we saw earlier in the series. He's left-handed. He's making just his third appearance in a Bandits uniform. In a small sample size, the ERA is a bit higher than he would like it to be. 1-0 with an ERA of 9. This is, uh, I beg your pardon, his fourth appearance. Two runs and two innings, but he picked up the win a couple nights ago. In relief of Corey Taylor, he pitched a scoreless fifth inning. Bandits won that game by a score of 12 to 6. So Kent Blackstone batting two, hole four. The Tuatara. Homza and Walker to come. And immediately, we talked about the brilliance earlier of David Sutherland. Difficult chance there down that right field line. But it is a single to Ken Blackstone. Uncharacteristic, perhaps, or just a tough bounce. We'll have a look at it. And there are a few better than David Sutherland at first base, and that was a bad hop. I would imagine that's an easier play to make will in the first put, inning. Will they put that down as an error? I don't know. That's up to the official scorer that's behind an, us. That's a 50-50 call to make. So the error, they deem it an error if they consider the play to be basic fundamentals, I guess, of the game. So a high fly ball, if you're underneath it and you have to drop it, would be considered an error. That, that bounce was in a baseline, and it probably hit a footprint, which gave it a funny hop. Usually, at the beginning of the game, the infield is in much better shape, but over the course of four or five innings, as we've seen today, we get players running and creating divots, and Ball just found one, and that's a bad break for the Bandits. So 
So now Johnny Homs up. They have given Blackstone a hit. The Caribou Crusher. So give Blackstone the hit, and therefore Sutherland will not get the error. So Johnny Homs up. Comes out to Led Zeppelin's Cashmere. Want to know the count. Here's the Filomino pickoff move. A little reminiscent of his fellow lefty, Travis Blackley. Yeah, we saw Filomino on the mound last night. So, good start at the bottom of the fifth, but they just want to try and extend that buffer. And this time, Johnny Holmes up. Foul ball away down the right field line. Blackstone will remain on first. Count will go to one and one. Talking about entry songs, I think Manny Rivera, famous closer, of course, for the New York Yankees, would come out to enter Sandman from Metallica. And that was more because of the lyrics in that particular song. Exit light, enter night, take my hand, we're off to Never Never Land, basically saying the game's going to be finished. Time to go to bed, boys. I'm going to finish Rivera. it, we're going to send it home. This time, it will be a comfortable double play for the Brisbane Heat. So a nice little 6-5, six, 6-4-3 six, play. So shortstop to second base, to first base. We'll just have a look here. So Logan Wade straight across to Grant Kay. Kay across to David Sutherland. And what looked promising for the Tuatara. Suddenly looks very promising for the Brisbane Heat. As box office Jared Walker comes into bat. Walker broke as bad as last time up, but delivered an RBI single that right now is the difference in the ball game. This time, grounds out to second base, and three up, three down for Filomeno, the new pitcher for the Brisbane Bandits. And as we head to the top of the sixth, it is the Tuatara leading four runs to three. Make Ramada by Wyndham your first choice for business and leisure travel in New Zealand. Whether it's big city comfort and style, or the perfect place to base your Kiwi adventure, watching a sunset at Castaways, or exploring the wonders of Queenstown, we welcome you to make every stay one to remember. Visit ramada.nz online for details and locations. Ramada by Wyndham New Zealand, part of the Marsden Group. Looking for a healthy activity program for your kids? Enroll them in a Kelly Sports after school or holiday program and they'll learn essential life skills in an exciting, fun and safe environment. Have a kid's birthday coming up? Make it an active one with a Kelly Sports themed birthday party. Join the thousands of other kids around the country in the national movement that is Kelly Sports. Check it out and book online today at kellysports.co.nz. See you there. Wonderful contest underway at North Harbour Stadium. The Tuatara, top of the sixth. Narrow lead over the Brisbane Bandits. Win today. They win the division. 
They go straight through to an automatic semi-final playoff. They lose today, the Canberra Cavalry win. And it will be a one-off wildcard game Tuesday night here at North Harbour Stadium. Elliot Johnston, just the second pitcher used by the Auckland Tuatara on the mound. In fact, the third pitcher used by the Tuatara to date, my apologies. They started today with Ryota Okamoto. And then they ended up using Jimmy Boyce. Now getting Elliot Johnston to try and get the job done. But immediately we have a runner on base. As Donald Lutz, the right fielder, comes into bat. And arguably or potentially his last season. Potentially. That's up to Donald. Uh, I'm sure he will have places where he will be invited to play, but it's a matter of... You were saying that he's picked up a coaching job? Well, this past year he was coaching in the Cincinnati Red system. He's uh, in the process of potentially spending significantly more time in Australia as a permanent resident. So he's got some options on the table, and it's in... Good position to be in, I suppose, if you've got options. Class act and a great player. So Elliot Johnston asking questions of Donald Lutz. He's a hit on the count. So still be the 2-0 and pitch. Nice day for baseball. Crowds have slowly built up over the season. into the dirt this time gets him swinging though and will strike him out so it's a good comeback David Sutherland up next some wonderful uh, signs in the crowd the one that always remember when I was living in, when I was overseas I think it was 2004 Johnny Damon with the Boston Red Sox then goes and signs for the Yankees which you just don't do wins a World Series with the Red Sox then signs for the New York Yankees and Johnny Damon had the long beard and the great sign in the crowd that said, from a Boston Red Sox fan. Well, I'll tell you in a moment. We'll just watch this pitch. Get some swinging. Because he had the long beard. And the sign was, looks like Jesus, throws like Mary, plays like Judas. <laughs> and I just thought that was so incredibly clever. Oh, the Yankees if you go him. to the Yankees, yeah. after having played for the Red Sox, you are a Judas. Yankees made him cut the beard, trim his hair. Damon, beloved oh. fan favorite with the Red Sox. He helped them end the curse, winning that world title yeah. back in 2004. So 0-2 to Atara. Jimmy Boyce this time. Fly ball, difficult chance. No, in fact, a very comfortable chance in the finish. Looked like just possibly a little bit of confusion might unfold there. But in the finish, just a fly ball to left field. And Andrew Mark taking the catch comfortably. So, there will only be one more out. And we go to the bottom of the sixth. And Elliot Johnston, how good has he been so far this season? We've got Eric Bremer, the voice of the Brisbane Bandits, alongside of me. Professional baseball commentator out of the United States who divides his time between here and America. I'll just get you a game, just for people who may have tuned in, just to run through the stats on Elliot Johnston in a moment, because he has been incredibly impressive. Homegrown New Zealand talent. This time, though, he finds himself behind on the count. Johnston, three wins, one loss. One of those wins came against the Bandits back in December. ERA of 1.19. That's only three earned runs allowed in 22 and two-thirds innings. Hasn't made a start, but you talked about potentially Johnston getting a start in the playoffs as we prepare for a Josh Cole mentor free postseason for the Tuatar. Tim Cole in the batter's box for the Brisbane Bandits. Top of the order for them. He had Josh Colmenter, magnificent last night, pitched the entire seven innings, just gave up the two hits, shut out the bandits, and probably the best display I certainly have seen in my short time in the sport of baseball. And I'd have to say, probably in the second half of the season, the best pitcher in the Australian Baseball League. And he's got potentially more opportunities now with the major league clubs. He had pitched, of course, for 
the Atlanta Braves and the Arizona Diamondbacks, a man affectionately known as the Tomahawks, and we wish Josh all the very best. I've got to say it's been a privilege working with him. As my expert comments for three out of every four home games. This time, two and two the count. So Elliot Johnston still looks like he's in control. Great move from Steve Mintz and the coaching staff of the Tuatara make the change. Kay took off for second there. Hasn't yet attempted a stolen base with the Bandits, but he runs well, and if you get him to second base, then just a single could tie this ball game. Low, so full count. And now Kay will go for sure. A 3-2 pitch, the only things that can happen are a base hit, a strikeout, or ball four. Tell you, jo Johnny Homza, though, he's got the ability to throw players out at second base. He's been very effective. I just wonder at this point in the game, though. No reason not to send him. There he goes. And it's ball four. And so, suddenly runners on first and second. So, he got himself just into a little bit of a hole here. Elliot Johnson, he won't be panicking too much. But Logan Wade, who's already hit a home run, will be next up for the Brisbane Bandits. Took us all a little bit off guard, Logan Wade. It was sort of a... Maybe because we've probably seen things more through the eyes of the Tuatara. He just brought a very appreciative crowd. Made them quiet very, very quickly. Hit one over the Teal Monster, the left field, the shortest part of North Harbour Stadium. It's been a good year for Wade. He's batting 293 heading into this plate appearance. Hit just outside of the plate. Mm. Can't Elliot do Johnson. the math in my head, but one more hit might push him above the 300 mark, and that always looks better on the back of your baseball card. Yeah, just want to exp uh, and we've emphasised it a lot, and I apologise to people if I sound repetitive, but just to the new audience that continuing to tune into the Tuatara, just to give you an idea of how much ball dominates the bat in baseball. I'll just give you that scenario after this pitch. And that just gets away from Elliot Johnson. Just slipping a little bit on the mound at the moment. We saw that a bit from Cole to yesterday too. It's a different material on the mound. That's a clay that gives a little bit less. Yeah. He's just struggling with his footing. So if you bat 10 times in baseball and you fail seven times, you're world class. A 300 batting <laughs> average puts 30%. you among the league's elite. The last batter to hit 400 in a Major League Baseball season was Ted Williams back around World War II. So that tells you how long it's been and how difficult it is to sustain. Yeah. I, I like the on-base percentage that they place a lot more emphasis, which means it, it factors in the fact that you've walked two now, which shows, again, I think you're rewarded for, for your ability to leave pitches. I think you're rewarded for your ability of your reputation. Clearly. Yeah. The stat that I like the best is OPS, which is on base plus slugging percentage that rewards someone who can hit home runs. It also rewards someone who can get on base. If you can do both, then your OPS will naturally be higher. And it's a more of a, an advanced stat for fans to learn, but it's a good bellwether for an offensive player. And they finish the innings there, so brilliant, brilliant from Elliot Johnston. What a player. Is he going to be the first Kiwi to get a genuine start in the Major Leagues? Well, he's got to sign with one first, but I don't think that's too far away. Bo Bishop there. He was brilliant last night with Cole Minter. He was the catcher last night to Weta Bishop. Great to see the New Zealand talent mixing it with the American, the Venezuelan, the Cubans, and this eclectic mix of United Nations that make up the Tuatara, but also make up a lot of the teams in the Australian Baseball League. So the crowd there, most of them sitting in the shade right along underneath the main stand here. A lot of people in the corporate hospitalities under the tents. It is a very warm day. So bottom of the sixth, that is the Tuatara leading the four-time defending champions, the Brisbane Bandits, four runs to three. The Bandits are out of the playoff contention, but they respect the game. They have been superb on Thursday and Friday night. Tuatara though wanting to clinch the division wouldn't that be simply remarkable and I apologise if I've been calling the Brisbane Bandits the Brisbane Heat, I struggle a little bit on day four 
Have I been calling them a heat? I've just had Chris Coleman from the Canberra Cavalry text me. Maybe it is the heat. Warm day here at the ballpark. The original Brisbane Bandits played in the previous iteration of this league back in the 1990s. Well, these days the Brisbane Heat, of course, are the cricket team, the franchise. So we do watch a lot of that here. So I do apologise if I have upset people in Brisbane. I think we're still getting over the emotion of yesterday, aren't we? Anyway, uh, nice to have you listening and watching, Chris Coleman. And good luck to your Canberra Cavalry team this afternoon. Of course, if the Tuatara win here, it won't make any difference. Canberra will be in that wild, that wild card game against the Perth Heat on Tuesday. Not the this, yeah, it is Perth. I'm starting to get confused now. The Brisbane Heat, the Perth Heat. There we go. I can call the Perth Heat the Perth Heat, can't I? Absolutely. There you, you go. There you go. Cheers, Chris. Pitching change for the Bandits, Sam Holland comes on. Holland making his first appearance of this series. He's overcome a slow start. He has the ERA down to 4.02. This will be his 17th appearance. We saw Ken Frosch last night, excuse me, two nights ago. No, it was last night. Uh, Frosch faced only one batter. He threw sidearm from the left side. Holland slings it at about waist height from the right side. Okay, so Kim stepping up. Ten home runs for the season for Kim. Good inning for Joseph Filomino. Faced three batters and a scoreless fifth. And a simple 5-3 play, ground out to third. And so one up, one down. Another high hop played well by Darville. He seems to be swinging at that first pitch a lot at the moment, Kim. Slightly uncharacteristic for him. Well, both teams are trying to win this game, but going back to discussions of unofficial traditions in the final day of the regular season, some players have informal fines if you have an at-bat longer than three or four pitches. It's getaway day. Everyone has flights to catch or uh, trips back home. Rare is the final day of the regular season with a game longer than three hours. Had a manager a couple years ago who will remain nameless intentionally get ejected from the final day of the season because he had a fantasy football draft that night and he wanted to get back to his office to prepare things. Ooh, strike call. Andrew Mark not happy with that. One ball, two strikes. So bottom of the sixth. Tuatara would like to try and extend the lead here. Andrew Mark, he's been relatively quiet by his own season standards. Another strike called. And Andrew Mark not happy. Where has that strike zone been all day, he asks. He felt that was knee height. Let's have a look at that. Well, I think if you look at the trajectory of the ball over the plate, I think Travis Watson got that right. As we've said throughout this series, all you want is consistency. And so they'll have another pitching change on the mound. It'll be the closer, Ryan Searle, coming on. We saw him get the final out of the sixth inning. Last night, both Searle and Holland are in the mix to be on the Australian national team. Searle, one of the more decorated pitchers in ABL history. We'll try and get the final out here. Looking on to the seventh inning, Emerson Martinez is warming for the Tuatara. That would be a save situation for him, and the Bandits will have up the heart of their order, three, four, and five, Martinez, Darville, and Dutton. Searle got the batter that he was asked to get last night, and on the year he's 1-2 and two with an ERA of 5.06. This will be his 15th appearance, and he's 6 of 8 in save opportunities, showing you that he does not shrink from the moment. So, bottom of the sixth, two outs.
Chris Richards to come. Already had a home run today. Was brilliant last night with one of the great defensive plays for the 2019-2020 season. With one of the great catches in right field. And what made it so great, well, firstly, it was a great catch, but it was in the context of the game. Could have easily turned the season of the Tuatara in terms of them making the playoffs or not making the playoffs in a wonderful pitching contest between Atherton and Josh Colmenter. Well, that's consistency from Watson. That was low. Andrew Mark will be going, you were calling me strikes. So crowd goes silent at North Harbour. I sense there is still a lot left in this game. But Josh McAdams, in fact Chris Richards, showing plenty of composure. Again, well and truly outside and low. So Searle. Just struggling to find a mark. The mark. His first three pitches on the mound. This time inside, and you'll take a walk. So, runner now on first. Josh McAdams. This is a nice test for Searle with the assumption that he will be asked to get outs late in ball games as the Australian national team prepares for the Olympics and tries to get that final at-large bid. Searle will probably be asked to get outs on back-to-back -back games, and this will be the first time that he's done that in some time. He had only one appearance over the last couple weeks because they were either blowout wins or blowout losses or rainouts. Looks for a ground ball down left field, foul ball. So Owen won the count. It's interesting too, isn't it? It must be also hard, a lot of these pitches. Clearly there's a time difference coming from Australia to New Zealand. It's New Zealand too, or sometimes three, sometimes six hours ahead on time. But also from having to pitch late at night to suddenly having to pitch at sort of one, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. And your nervous system can fluctuate a lot. You know, some days there's a reason why a large part of the world have siestas at one or two o'clock in the afternoon, because the body can generally shut down. So... Those warm-up protocols need to be well and truly established as we see a fly ball and the catch will be taken in centre field. Tuatara inning will come to a close as we head to the top of the seventh. It is the Tuatara leading the Brisbane Bandits. Four runs to three. You wouldn't go on site without your work socks. You wouldn't go on site without your high vis. You wouldn't go on site without your safety gear. And you wouldn't go on site without your tool belt. Don't be a tool. Get on site with the right equipment. Buy your new Transit or Ranger from John Andrew Ford. Number one by choice. By tradies, not by chance. Welcome back to Tuatara Park. Another enthralling contest. The home team looking to try and win the division championship. But the challenge is coming from the four-time defending champions, the Brisbane Bandits. They've got three 
else to secure the division title. That the Bandits have an opportunity to steal it at the death and give the Canberra Cavalry an opportunity later on this afternoon to beat the Sydney Blue Sox Emerson Martinez, and take the championship. Emerson Martinez has only one save this year, coming in three tries, but he'll try and go through the heart of the Bandits order here in the seventh. Yeah, somewhat surprised that uh, they've taken Elliot Johnston out of the game. They clearly are wanting to keep him on ice. Believe that Martinez can get the job done, get the job done asked of him. And that should be the first out. A lovely little 6-3 play. Yoni Hernandez at shortstop. Across to Josh McAdams at first. Just trying to find where Jared Walker is at the moment. Now I know that the Tuatara celebrated quite a bit last night, and for good reason, clinching a playoff berth. If they clinch the division today, what do you expect to see on the field? Oh, look, I think it'll be a bit more subdued. I think last night, no, as Dale Budge said in the interview with Steve Mintz after that game, there's so much that's gone on for this Tuatara club that hasn't been reported in the media. Clearly, the death of Ryan Costello at the start of the season, but there have just been so many hurdles that they've had to overcome, and so they'd played so poorly on Thursday and Friday night that it was just starting to creep in that they might not get it done. And so, yeah, they celebrated last night like they'd almost won the championship, but it was, it lasted sort of 45 minutes and it was fairly controlled after that. And, and another fly ball taken in second, taken in centre field by Kiwi Kim. So Emerson Martinez, two up, two down, one out away from clinching the division title. Wade Dutton stepping up, though. Do they look to walk him? Or do they just go at him? North Harbour stands. Trying to win the North East Division. Crowd roars. One strikes, two strikes away from becoming the Northeast Division champions in the Australian Baseball League for 219, 220 in just their second season. And now the strike foul, Johnny Honza takes that. And so now 0-2 is the count. This will mean a direct semi-final, no wild card playoff on Tuesday night. They will probably travel to Melbourne on Wednesday, play an away game on Thursday and then come back for games two and three here at Tuatara Park next Saturday and Sunday. What a season it's been. This very knowledgeable and appreciative crowd are on their feet. Goes down Broadway, they check the swing, no intent, one and two, now the count. And great to see just such an eclectic mix of people supporting the Tuatara. This time he goes out and strikes him out. And there you go, the Tuatara in just their second season are the Northeast Division champions of the 2019-2020 league. Been simply a wonderful display, a wonderful performance. Yoni Hernandez, Kent Blackstone, Johnny Homza, Jared Walker, Kim Won Sook, Andrew Mark, Chris Richards, Josh McAdams, Max Brown, and then the list of other players that have played their part, the likes of Bo Bishop, Daniel Lamb Hunt, Sandro Cabrera, Macaulay Fox, Elliot Johnston, Yujo Kitigata, Junior Michihara, Emerson Martinez, Jimmy Boyce, Kiyohei Muranaka, Jen Ho Singh, Josh Colmenter, Tyrone Boiler, Aidan Hammond, Grant Cooper, and Jacob Davidson. Stand up, magnificent, baseballers on the rise, Settle in Auckland, we're ready for major semi-final time. We welcome Malcolm, we welcome at Melbourne next weekend. The Tuatara in the fourth game have beaten the three-time champions, four runs to three. They square the series at two games each. Let's enjoy the celebration, let's enjoy the moment.
in the first year of divisional play last year. The Brisbane Bandits took the Northeast Division title on their way to their fourth consecutive ABL championship. They've been dethroned this weekend in Auckland. The Tuatara are division champions, and they too have their sights set on claiming the ABL title. And the Brisbane Bandits, well, I apologize if I keep saying the Brisbane Heat. We were talking very much about Perth being here on Tuesday, the Perth Heat, and of course with the cricket analogies, but they have been just remarkable, and they've just been so gracious in defeat, Brisbane, not having made the playoffs after having fought one four years straight. And it is very much still a celebration, but a lot more subdued than what we saw last night. They know now it is the business end of the season. And we will try and go sideline with Tuatara manager Steve Mintz. Dale Budge is standing alongside of him. Coach Mintz, congratulations, mate. That's uh, first place in the North East. How does that feel? Oh, it's, oh, we came out today. Uh, we didn't really know how we are going to do our pitching, you know, but uh, Rayota went out there, got us through, got us, you know, six, five or six outs, and then Jimmy Boyce got some. Elliot was huge. I mean, he came in the first, second, nobody out, works his way out of that. And then Emerson finishing up the game right there, one, two, three. And I mean, we, we missed a wild card game. Now we can play a series. So that, it was a huge win today. Uh, I'm going to regret asking this, but Chris Richards in the series, a couple of big moments and a big home run today. Yeah, no doubt. You know, and we he's been around. We've been trying to use him when we can. Um, but now he'll be able to get into the playoffs with us, and we're super. He can, he can play a lot of places, so it helps us a bunch. We know the Tuatara have lost some players. A few days now to sort of reset. Consider what you're going to do come uh, Thursday night. Uh, any ideas of who might start? Have you even started thinking that far ahead? Well, I mean, we'll, I mean, we'll definitely go with Maranaka, uh, game one, where, wherever it's at, wherever it's played. And so, um, uh, and then and we'll go from there. We'll worry about game one first. All right, mate, go and enjoy this awesome job. Fantastic. Thank well done. Thank you. Northeast Division champions, the Auckland Tuatara in just their second season. We also need to acknowledge Heva Bueno, Jared Koenig, and the great Josh Morgan for their contributions up to this point. And again, like last night, this very much dedicated to Ryan Costello and to Ryan Costello's family, this team playing in his honour for this entire season. I'll just get the final thoughts of Eric Bremer. Eric, it's been a privilege having you alongside of me. Go the to Tuatara in the playoffs. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mark. This has been a fun series. The Bandits took the first two, and they couldn't have done it in more convincing fashion. I think many around the league, outside of this ballpark, thought that the Bandits were once again going to run the table and make it to the playoffs. But the Tuatara needed to beat the best to be the best, and they did that last night and again this afternoon. A well-deserved division title for the Tuatara, and a hearty congratulations to this club from the Brisbane Bandits. We will wait for the official press release and the official uh, official word from the Australian Baseball League in regards to the schedule now, but we understand it will be against Melbourne. More than likely, that the Tuatara team will travel on Wednesday, play a game over there on Thursday. Both teams will travel back to New Zealand for games two and three, if both games are, in fact, required. So it has been an absolute privilege and a pleasure calling this regular season. Now incredibly excited about the postseason. On behalf of myself and Eric Bremer, it's been an absolute privilege and a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day.